Tiger football. You are watching Sweat Football on AT&T Sportsnet. Tonight, it's one of the oldest rivalries in the league as the Tigers from Texas Southern University take on Southern University out of Baton Rouge at BBVA Stadium in downtown Houston, Texas. Hello, everyone. I'm Butch Alcindor, along with college football analyst Jorge Vargas, and this will be the 75th game in this series. <laughs> and even though Southern has the advantage on paper, they've won 50 times, they've lost 20 times, they have four ties, TSU has a lot to be optimistic about coming into this game tonight after they took Prairie View right down to the wire two weeks ago. Yeah, and they did that by having an amazing second half. They came back really yeah. strong, and they feel like today, if they come out the way they ended against Prairie View and m they're going to have a great shot. And, of course, whenever you grab Louisiana and Texas, there's always a lot to talk about when the two uh, hit the turf, no doubt about it. Okay, meanwhile, for the Jaguars, they come in with a one-in-one -one record, thanks in no small part to their outstanding defense. And it's led by number 32, Jordan Lewis. All he did was pick up 14 tackles in two games and four and a half sacks. Yeah, this guy plays like an absolute monster. We saw him in the first week against Alabama State. Uh, he is uh, what I call a quick twitch uh, player, a guy who knows where he's going to go and gets there fast. TSU will have their eyes on them and guarantee it they'll be double teaming and make sure he can calm him down and not let him disrupt their offense. Meanwhile, on the other side, because of injuries, the Tigers will turn to freshman quarterback Jalen Brown tonight. He's straight out of Sugar Ridge High School in Round Rock, but Coach McKinney believes he has all the tools to be an outstanding college quarterback. Yeah, they feel lucky to get this guy. He got hurt his senior year from ACL, so the scouts kind of backed off of him, and they feel incredibly lucky to have him. They think he's going to be a big player tonight, 6'2", 220. He's got a big arm, and uh, they're looking for him to, to, to create some great offense for him tonight. Well, we have 15% capacity in the stands tonight, so the Tigers and Jaguars, well, they are set to renew their rivalry. We'll be back in a minute with the kickoff here on AT&T Sportsnet. Welcome to BBVA Stadium, everyone, as we get set for the kickoff between tonight's game between the Southern Jaguars and the homestanding TSU Tigers as the visitors come out onto the field at BBVA Stadium tonight. We expect a whale of a ball game tonight as they get set for the opening coin flip. And when you look at these two teams, Jorge, they're both coming into this game tonight off of defeats. Both teams are going to be hungry to get something positive going tonight. Yeah, you know, both coaches spoke about it this week, though, is this week off really helped both of them. Both of them felt like that last, not only was it a loss, they took some physical abuse, let's call it, and a lot of injuries on both sides of, their, of, the, of the team, and they feel like this week helped them get healthy, so they, they are ready this week now with that week off, so they actually wanted that week off. The Tigers, of course, had a ball game that went right down to the wire last week at Prairie View. They lost in the last minutes of the ball game. It was an outstanding game, so they come in here tonight with some momentum. As we see at midcourt there, Devon Bell for the Southern Jaguars and Jonathan Giles for the TSU Tigers for the coin flip to start the ball game. And just how important will it be for the Tigers to get off to a fast start in this ball game? Well, you know... The TSU's had a history of trying to grab momentum from one game and bring it to the other, right? A lot of times in games, they've been able to fix fix it second half, and I think that's great coaching, great adjustments, right? And they've been able to do that, and then they can't carry that on to the next game, so it's important. Uh, TSU will start with the football first, but let's check out our keys to the game tonight. For the Tigers, they must stay away from third and long situations with the young quarterback, and defensively, the Tigers must shut down that running attack. Uh, no, no doubt about it. Now, let's just talk about first you got to stay away from those third and longs you got a young quarterback Jalen Brown a lot of that's going to be play calling make the make those passes easy and quick for him I like good slant patterns there and those running backs are going to have to step up to help out and of course uh, you, you definitely have to take care of that and keys for Southern 
uh, they must cut down on penalties. Last time they were out, man, they had some penalties that just, just cut them down in the first half. They were never able to recover on that. And as far as uh, consistent play from the quarterback position, whoever steps up there, they need them to be consistent, no turnovers, and keep their demeanor. Last last week, Skelton, or two weeks ago, Skelton uh, had a little bit of an issue with a penalty, and it cost his team, and they got to stay in rhythm. As we see the TSU Tigers on the sideline, they will start with the football first on offense. As Jorge just mentioned, that has been one of the keys to the ball game for the Tigers. Can they get off to a quick and a fast start in this game? And we talked about it some before, but Coach McKinney has even come up with a special drill he calls his fast start drill to help these guys get out of the gates more quickly. Yeah, you almost have to have that mentality of the two-minute drill to start the game, right? And I like no huddle. I mean, they all do no huddle, but, I mean, really move it along, right? Pretend like it's really a two-minute drill and keep that pace. You already have usually a script of the first eight to ten plays that you know you want to run right out of the beginning of the game. Have that pace. Know your players are going to run it and go out there and just dominate. And, and try to get that rhythm early because I think when a, when you get an offense out there, especially now with a young quarterback going to get out there, if you can get a rhythm early, I think it means the world. And plus, your whole team sees that confidence building. And the thing we saw two weeks ago against Prairie v and the team just kept getting more and more confident as the game went on. Last week we saw uh, Thurman Morbley did an outstanding job on kickoff returns. He will be back for the TSU Tigers. And there you see the man who will get the game underway. That's number 30, Cesar Barajas. He's the kicker for the Southern Jaguars. He's been around for a while. You know, last season, he was 8 of 11 on his field goal attempts, had a long of 46 yards. So uh, he was one of the better kickers in the league last year. I mentioned at the top, we have 15% of a capacity crowd on hand tonight. So we have fans in the building for football, and that always makes it more exciting. And here is Baraja putting toe to the football, and we are underway at BBVA. It's Morbley fielding it at the three. Starts to the right side, turns the corner, has a lot of room, and then Morbley is knocked out of bounds near the 34-yard line. So the TSU Tigers will start with excellent field position as they go on offense in this game. Yeah, those Tigers, I mean, they, they have their special teams have been just that, special. And, of course, tonight we expect to get our first look at freshman quarterback Jalen Brown. He will be in the lineup for the TSU Tigers tonight. Devin Williams started two weeks ago. He injured his shoulder. Thaddeus Payton came on, played well, but he injured his ankle. So now we have freshman quarterback Jalen Brown. He fakes a handoff, starts with a pass. It is complete and a nice game by the TSU Tigers to open the ball game. That's number 81, Jaron Johnson on the catch. A nice safe pass for your freshman quarterback. Yeah, and, and what I talked about, you you mentioned earlier, the keys of the game, you know, third down, keep, you know, get them going. Well, that's starting off with a good first down play, and that was it, and get them in the rhythm. Second and about four, the handoff goes to Howard, and look at Howard fighting for every inch right there as he picked up another four yards. He's going to be very close to a first down for the TSU offense and that's good enough for the first down. It did move the sticks. Yeah, good rhythm there. I mean, he did a good job of vision going, cutting to the outside. Nice job there. So the Tigers open with a first down on their very first possession. This time it's Brown handing to Howard again, and he's going to be yanked out of bounds near midfield. So a good reaction by that Southern defense. Caleb Carter, number 47, coming over to make the tackle. Yeah, big Nathaniel Hines, he was pulling around. Whenever you get your center that's going to pull around <laughs> outside the tackle, that's pretty special. And uh, uh, Howard just uh, tucked in behind him. Nice play. Tigers have second and five. This time he fakes the handoff to Brown, and he's going to be pulled down for a loss of three in the backfield. A fine tackle on the play by the Jaguars for the, for the loss. Yeah, that was a good tackle. I mean, he, he read that play, came flying off the edge. Looked like number 41, Ray Anderson. Yeah, no one got him. It was a backside play. They were supposed to move quicker out the front. 
That will set up a third and about six. And under pressure, the ball is knocked out. It's a fumble on the play. And big number 77, Drake Sinners. What an alert play as he tracked it down and dove on that fumble. That was almost disaster early on for the TSU offense as the young quarterback is stripped. Yeah, his coach is right there in his ear right now saying, hey, you got to hang on to that ball. He had that ball low with one hand. When you get under pressure like that, you can't hold it like that. And I'll tell you, that, that, that was certainly dangerous. They're lucky to recover that ball. Just an alert play by Drake Sinners. Of course, he's the big 300-pound junior from Tatum, Texas. And now we will see Sawyer Evans, the freshman from Arlington, on the punt the football away. Nice snap. He gets the kick away. And it takes a TSU bounce as it goes out of bounds right around the 31-yard line. So that is where the Southern Jaguars will go on offense first. And it's a bit of a mystery as uh, who they will have at quarterback. Because we talked about it before. It's been Ladarius Skelton throughout, you know, for the last 21 games. It's been Ladarius Skelton. But last week he got pulled in favor of John Lampley. And we will see who the Tigers Skelton send out. Is. It out is there. Skelton. So last week he got uh, pulled from the game, got benched. Came back on. We know what this guy can do, though. He has a lot of skills. He can run the football. He can also throw the football. And he starts with a handoff. Yeah, part of those those skills for, for TSU, part of the, 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 the uh, things they have to accomplish is, is stop the run. They didn't do it there. That was Corey Williams coming around on that little jet sweep there. He is stopped after a nice gain of about eight yards. But we do have a TSU Tiger who is injured on the play. We'll see if we can catch a number, but just a little bit to catch you up on the situation with Skelton and Lampley. Last week, Lampley came in off the bench. you got to consider Lampley had not been in a football game since 2018. So he had to shake off a little <laughs> bit of that rust, and he did. He actually tossed two touchdown passes, also had three picks. But Ladarius Skelton has been the man in this offense, and let's we'll take another look at that run. Yeah, he just got to the outside. And he got way too many yards. Look, look at how far before anyone even touches him. So uh, TSU's got to come down that line of scrimmage. You can't leave those huge gaps in there. We talked about it at the beginning, keys of the game. TSU's got to slow down that Southern run game. If they have that run game running like that, then you're leaving it wide open for passes. And it's just, it, it can be, you can suffer a lot of big plays like that. It looks like it might be Ja'Cory Benjamin. We can't get a good look. It is Ja'Cory Benjamin, number eight, coming off on his own power. That's always great to see. So after picking up eight yards on first down, the Jaguars will go back on the attack for a second and two. Yeah, he's a solid cornerback out of Hastings, so they, they're certainly going to want to get him checked out and hopefully he can go back in. Skelton at quarterback. He led the team in rushing last year with 870 yards, and that's what he does best. And Skelton slipped at right after he picked up the first down, and he was looking at a lot more on that play. Yeah, I was going to say, if you think he was just taking a dive so he didn't take a hit, that is not the case. He just, uh, watch him right here, boom, he just he cut off the inside foot, and he slipped. He's mad at himself right there. Big first down for the Jaguars. First and 10 football at about the 42-yard line. Skelton will throw this one, fires it out, completes his pass, and great recovery by the Tigers. That's Jorian Valian made the catch, but he had nowhere to go because TSU made a quick recovery on the play. Alec Prince, one of the Tigers there, they help out on that stop. Yeah, the biggest problem with this play, Butch, was the fact that the ball was thrown behind him a couple of yards. By the time he caught the ball, turned around, uh, the blocking he did have in front of him was already gone, and TSU did a great job of reacting and three guys on the ball. Yeah, Germant, Germant's Webb also there for the Tigers. Second down now in about 11 after the loss of one. Skelton looking to throw quickly. Fires again. Has Valiant again. And he tries to break away, and he does a good job of running with the football after making the catch. Jorian Valiant, a 6'2", 180-pound sophomore from Alexandria. He's actually a transfer from Tulane. 
Yeah, he, he ran good with that ball. I mean, there were, you know, one thing I noticed last week uh, when, when TSU and, and Prairie View were playing, the tackling was very good, and so far, right now, it's, 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 it's doing well as well. Julian Marcantel helping out on that tackle. And the Jaguars go to the power run to Gerard Sims straight ahead. And he is very close to another first down for Southern. We'll see where the officials mark it. And it is a first down for the Jaguars. Tell you, the in interior line of Southern is, is physical. I mean, they are just, uh, I'm, I'm watching some blocks in there. And it, it's, it's impressive. Skelton at quarterback with Devon Ben, number two in the backfield. He has two wide receivers to his right and two wide receivers to his left. Skelton looking to pass, had some heat on him, and that is incomplete. Nice coverage underneath by Julian Markintel, who got a lot of good depth on his drop there at his linebacker post. You know, he, he's a guy that I just, I think he's a, just an excellent football player because you watch him against the run, he is staunch, he is physical. And right there to see him with that kind of break and that great job of coverage on, uh, as, a, as a coverage linebacker, I mean, that just shows he is an incredibly well-rounded linebacker. We can see the Jaguars picking up the pace just a little bit. Skelton on the keeper again, a design run. He has a lot of room right up the middle, and Skelton is very close to another first down. We will see where they're spotted, but again, that's that extra dimension he gives you. It's like having another running back in the backfield. Yeah, well, look at this dimension. You had a guard and a tackle pulling from the left side and running up, and you have a big uh, quarterback running in behind him. Well, well executed right there. Very well executed, and it's a first down for the Jaguars. The ball resting now at about the 38-yard line. Skelton looking for a slant pass, has his man. It's complete, and it's going to be a touchdown for the Southern Jaguars on the play. That is number 86, who takes it in for the Jaguars. Ethan Howard, the big tight end, hit him on the slant pass, and he took it the distance, breaking a couple of tackles. Fantastic timing pattern. Watch this. He's going to come right in. As soon as he takes off, he's slanting, looking inside. He got inside the defensive back, and then he just kept going. He runs strong. I talked about tackling being important. you got to be able to stop him. And look how quick it is. I mean, Skelton did a great job setting his feet and planting and put it right where it goes, right there. And he paused just enough to let his big tight end get beyond the coverage, and he put the ball right on him. And number 86, Ethan Howard, took it in for the touchdown. Now, before the extra point, we do have flags on the field. And we will see what this one is all about. But the Jaguars get on the board first. Offside, number 32, the defense. We have to distance the goal. We'll retry. That is our referee, Mr. Johnson, tonight with a good call early on. So we will now have the extra point attempt coming up with 9.14 to go here in the first quarter. Can't say enough about the timing of that play and how well executed it was. Cesar Baraja with John Lampley to hold. Good snap, good hold, and his kick is up and through the uprights. And it's the Southern Jaguars on a beautiful night in Houston, Texas, breaking out on tap with the touchdown pass from Ladarius Skelton. 7-0 Jaguars as we pause for a quick timeout. And the Southern Jaguars just went on an eight-play, 70-yard drive to pay dirt as Ladarius Skelton led the way. They did it on the ground. They did it in the air. This time it's Skelton on the keeper. A nice gain as they just kept working their way down. Good mixture. And then the TD pass right there to Ethan Howard, 38 yards on the touchdown. So the Jaguars have now kicked off. And the Tigers return it. And the return man is knocked down short of the 20-yard line. So TSU will start with the football. Very close to the 20-yard line. So they will get their second possession of the night. Let's talk about the team uniforms tonight, presented by Under Armour. As you can see, TSU in the maroon and gray. And you see Southern with that baby blue and white, just like the old Houston Oilers used to wear. <laughs> used to wear. <laughs> team uniforms tonight, presented by Under Armour for this big game. 
So the freshman quarterback out for his second possession of the game, and he starts with Ja'Cory Howard banging his way forward. Excuse me, that is number 22, Ladarius Owens, who had 109 yards last week. Owens gets his first carry of the night, and it's good for three yards inside. High snap. Brown does a good job to control it, and then he threw it away. It was intended for Giles. Some contact on the play, and we do have a couple of uh, flags down over in the direction of Giles. The Southern players clapping on that, and, and I will say this about the snap. That's the second one in a row. The snap uh, has been really, really high. It's a good thing uh, Jalen Brown's tall enough to be able to, to get up there and get it, but that's the second, second snap in a row. I think we saw that a couple weeks ago, that the snaps can be inconsistent, and what that does, it throws the entire timing off of the, of the whole play. So when you have a snap that's, that's up in the air and you can't set your feet and you can't look downfield as a quarterback and what that makes them do, they're going to quit looking up down the field, and they're going to have to just focus on the ball the whole time, and that takes them a moment instead of being able to break down the defense. And you can see the officials over there talking to Southern head coach Dawson Odoms. He wants an explanation, and we will all get an explanation. Pass interference, number zero, the offense. 15 yards from the previous spot. Replay second down. Correct. Half the distance to the goal. Second down. So that penalty will push TSU back half the distance to the goal. Jonathan Giles called for offensive interference, and uh, that's the last thing you really want to do in that situation is put your young quarterback, Jalen Brown, in a big hole on the second possession. Yeah, I didn't see it on that play, though. I mean, I assume it, it didn't look like, the, I mean, the, the, the defender uh, from Southern was adamant right when that play happened that there was offensive interference. So. Uh, I don't doubt that it happened, but it, it happened really, really quick. And again, that ball was thrown so high, it was an uncatchable ball. The young freshman quarterback, he's 6'2", and now he's up to 235, uh, Coach McKinney told me. And of course, when he came in, he was about 15 pounds lighter. But you know, when you're a freshman, you got room to grow, and then you get to go to the training table. It, it all kind of works out like what, that. What do they call it, the freshman 15, right? <laughs> I mean, I think he was on the wrong. That's usually not for an athlete, though. Yeah, but, you know, he's, he's got the frame for it. A 6'2", 235. Uh, freshman quarterback, I understand he has a rocket arm, and now the officials, it looks like, let's see, they're trying to get the spot of the ball correct. That's what it is. Yeah, they're walking them all around trying to figure out where it is. It looks like it's going to be just short of the 11-yard 11, 11 line. Took a little bit, but now we're in great shape. So Jalen Brown will have a second and about 20 as he hands off to Owens inside and the Southern defense collapse on the play. Just great coverage right there by Caleb, Caleb Carter and a couple of his other teammates. Good, just good recovery by that Southern defense. Yeah, they're all over it. I think they know exactly what they're going to do. And even right here, I mean, you can expect either some type of quick pass, maybe maybe a screen to the running back here to try to do a safe, safe play here. Third down coming up in about 20 yards for the Tigers. A high snap. It goes over Brown's head. He's in the end zone, and he steps out of the end zone, and that will be a safety by the Southern defense. And again, you mentioned it early on, the Tigers having some issues with that snap and another high snap over Jalen Brown's head. Yeah, I mean, you can't get anything done as a quarterback uh, if you can't get the ball correctly. And again, these aren't just a little high. These, these are way over his head. They've got to get that correct on the sidelines. And again, that's what, four out of three, I think is what we called here. Uh, uh, snaps that just weren't getting it done. And Nate Hines, that's surprising because he's the veteran offensive lineman, uh, you know, the big 6'2", 300-pound senior from San Diego. Yeah, he's the one that pulled uh, on, on, the, on the play earlier in the game in that first drive, did, a, did an excellent job. Uh, don't know what happened to his rhythm because, you know, a lot of snapping is a rhythm thing. You just kind of start to feel it. And right now he's just got to readjust what he's feeling. Well, and, and, of course, Big Nate's the guy who makes all the calls inside on the offensive line, so he has a lot of responsibility on him, but usually he's pretty steady. Yeah, no, and you can see him on, on the sidelines right now. He's got a ball in his hand, and he's going to go uh, take some snaps. He walked over to his quarterback, kind of gave him the old, hey, look, that one's on me. Uh, and so they're going to take some and try to get some rhythm together. So give the two points to the Southern Jaguars as the bad snap in the end zone recovered by Jalen Brown, and then he's escorted out of the back of the end zone. So Southern gets credit for the safety on the play, and Richard Garcia will be on to kick the ball right back to the Jaguars. 
Yeah, you can tell Nate's got a lot of guys that uh, believe in him because a lot of guys have come over and high fived him and said, hey, let's go. His quarterback's talking to him. So uh, they're, they're going to get it back together. They're running through it here. That's Shaiki Thomas on the return, and he fights his way right at the 30-yard line before he's pulled down. So Southern will start his second possession of the ball game with the ball resting on the 30-yard line. So the TSU defense didn't get an opportunity to get a lot of rest, and they have to go right back out and try to come up with a big stop. Yeah, and, and they know they're going to run right at them, all right? I mean, when you get success against a team, and you're going to do what's working. Your offensive line, you feel like, is already controlling the, the line of scrimmage right now early. So I, I would be not be surprised at all to see some uh, heavy dose of running, slamming right in them. Skelton going to keep on first down. He has some room. Great blocking along the sideline. Dombon Ben threw a great block over there, sealing everything inside. And Skelton, we talked about it. He's like another running back in the backfield. Yeah, and just watch. I mean, uh, they, they pull. They are not scared to pull plenty of linemen and going down the line. And, and one thing I, 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 I'm always amazed, sometimes when linemen pull, they just stay going horizontal. They don't turn up. Uh, these, these guys are actually hitting their mark and turning it up the field. Skelton gives inside to Ben, and he picks up the first down for the Jaguars as he goes forward for about five yards on the carry. Yeah, the Southern's starting to get some swagger. You can already tell early in this game as far as the run game goes. When you got Lyman, you know, stepping up and putting the first down sign right out of the gate, you, you know, they're, they're, wanting, they're, they're wanting their coach to say, yeah, let us control this game. Well, let's face it. They played a game last week, two weeks ago, that they felt like they should have won, and they didn't win. So Coach McKinney and company knew they'd come in here with a breathing a little fire, and now it's time to put some of that fire out. Another first down for the Jaguars. The handoff goes to Ben again, and he works his way forward for about three that time. Big number 95, Viramontes Pippins on the top for that TSU defense. Yeah, that was that was a great job of them squeezing it down. Everyone everyone filled their gaps, and they didn't move, and they did, they did not get bullied uh, up at the line of scrimmage there. Good job by the Tigers. Second and eight for Skelton in the offense. Fires near the sidelines. That's a completed pass. He has number 80, Tyler Kirkwood. Matthew Williams was able to push him out of bounds, but a nice grab by Kirkwood. But again, you get the short tackle right there, and I think that's the most important thing. You still give him a third down and about three. So as a defense, you still have, you still have the opportunity to stop them on this drive. Third down and about three and a half for Skelton and company. Under pressure, he's caught, tries to get away, can't do it. That's Matthew Williams, the defensive back in the backfield on the blitz, coming up with a huge sack for the TSU defense. Absolutely great defensive call by the coordinator there. And I'll tell you, they came, when you call a blitz and guys don't really come out full, that's the, the most aggravating thing as a coordinator. Right there, he called that blitz at the perfect time. They came right up the middle. Kind of a gut blitz is what I call that. And, boy, they, they, they came to the end, and then Skelton had nowhere to go. Well, just a great job of disguising the blitz yep. and giving him a, a straight lane to the quarterback and a big play by Matthew Williams, who actually came up with an interception two weeks ago. So, once again, he's got a big play on defense as Barajas punts the football away. And the Tigers had a little problem there on the return. It's Morbley, and now we are mixing it up. Morbley didn't like the late hit after he bobbled the football. And he'll, we'll, he'll, we'll see where that flag is going to go. He'll be out of this game. <clears throat> I mean, he, he's going to be out of this game. I mean, he threw, he threw a punch. I don't know if we can see that again. Uh, but he didn't like the fact that when he dropped the ball, uh, the defender from Southern actually grabbed him and kind of pulled him over off the ball again. But at the end of the day, when that ball's moving around as a defender, you're going to try to pull it and see if you can get to that ball. He didn't like it stood up, and at least from my first view, it looked like he took a swing. I don't know if we got another view of that, guys. Well, the officials are still talking it over on the side, down there on the field. You can see Jordan Lewis listening in, and let's take another look at the punt return. Yeah, so right there, that pull at the end is what got him all upset, and then he gets out. 
Well, Morbley thought it should have been a horse collar uh, on the play up by number yeah, 26. Yeah, see right there, you see him throw a punch. Carline Davis was down there early, kind of. Unsportsmanlike conduct, number five of the receiving team. Be 15 yards, correction, be half the distance to the goal, and a first down, takes a southern. Yeah, wow. Thurman Morbley, man, that, that's going to hurt the Tigers and is going to put them back in another hole to start this drive. Well, quite honestly, they're very lucky, I think, on that on that call. He didn't get thrown out of the game. <laughs> 523 to go in the first. Tigers trailing 9-0 to the Jaguars. Tigers are playing host to the Jaguars from Southern University. We have 523 to go in a 9-0 ball game so far. Most of the offense coming on the southern side of the football. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, we talked a little bit about it. I mean, Southern Southern is getting more and more swagger. They get more and more comfortable. Their offense, uh, uh, offensive line is dominating the line of scrimmage. But again, I think that huge third down stop was big for Texas Southern. Uh, that blitz was a great play call and even better executed. And I think that that was huge. Now, obviously, uh, this penalty puts them in a bit of a hole. But but I think the, the big win there is that, is that Morbley didn't get thrown out of the game because Again, whether he curled his actual fist up or not, he took a swing at another play, and a lot of times that'll get you thrown out of the football game. It gives us a, it gives us a second here to talk about freshman quarterback Jalen Brown after the penalty. So he's coming back. He's trying to they're trying to ease him into this ball game. You don't want to put the young man under a lot of pressure, but he's he's coming into a big situation in this game and that's one of the things I thought coach McKinney was so impressed with. He did not think any situation would be too big for him. Here is that quarterback looking to throw on the slant, a perfect pass and it's complete to Jonathan Giles and that is a Texas Southern first down. But we're talking about how no situation is too big for that young man and he stepped up. Yeah, you got to give them the ability to call the plays, and, and the players got to get open. They did a great job getting open. That time, a big play in the backfield on Howard. He's tracked down after a very short game by Derek Williams, who got into the backfield quickly for the Southern Jaguars, and just no room for Howard to go on that play at all. And, and then we just saw Giles limp off the field. He was holding his leg, so that's not a good sign for the Tigers. And we have whistles before they could get the play off. Timeout. Southern, they're first charged. The timeout will be charged to the Jaguars. Yeah, and what's interesting on that is, is I think it's because Texas Southern picked up their pace. And like I, I mentioned earlier, I mean, I like when you start a game off and you get that pace going and you put the D. Everyone does no huddles now, so there's no, no one worries about that kind of stuff, right? But when you do a no huddle and you call a play within seven, ten seconds, that puts that defense on, the, on, the, on their heels. They're not sure what's expected. Let me remind everyone that you can get all the latest sports information, stats, and schedule schedules at TSUsports.com. That is the number one source for Tiger sports information. And if you want Tiger sports information, Tiger's playing in the NCAA tournament today, taking on Michigan. They lost to Michigan, but, you know, they beat Mount St. Mary's in a great opening round game, got them to set up that matchup today against Michigan. And, of course, the Wolverines just a little bit too tough That's just in a that tough one road. today. That's a tough road to go in. But I, I saw the game one, and that was absolutely fantastic. Well, let's just say a big congratulations to Johnny Jones and the TSU men's basketball team. So Brown fires on the slant again. This time it's too hot and maybe a little too high as he was trying to hit Osby Mitchell, who had a step. Yeah, Osby just needed to, to turn his body in just a little bit. And, of course, that's easier to say. <laughs> when you're going full speed. But that defender was right on his hip. But again, he throws a rocket. He does. You know, we heard a lot about his arm. What a great arm he has. And, you know, Coach described it as a high-velocity arm. And you could see just a little bit of it on that play. Third and ten now for the Tigers. Jalen Brown throws underneath. Has a completed pass. And a great extra effort there. A fine play by Jaron Johnson. He's going to be a little shy of the sticks, but what an effort. Those are plays that you don't don't really, you know, go unnoticed, you know, as far as the big game goes, but man, that was just inspiring. 
Well, that's going to bring a fourth down, and we see Jalen Brown still on the field. So Coach Clarence McKinney on a fourth and one. He's going to roll the dice early in this ball game and try to pick up that first down. Great play by the freshman quarterback, Jalen Brown. He has his man, Jaron Johnson. What a fake. He had pressure all in his face, and he calmly and coolly delivered that football right on target. There's not a harder pass to make than that. Watch, he's throwing, a, <laughs> going to the left as a right-handed quarterback with a guy on your throwing arm. Absolutely perfect strike. Great play call. And, and, it, and Chase Foster tracked it down for the Jaguars, or it would have been an even bigger play. So this time, he's going to keep it. Jalen Brown diving forward for about eight yards. So the freshman quarterback has his team on the move. I love the pace. I love the play call. And you can tell he's getting excited. His team's getting excited behind him. And you notice the snaps are, are now in, in good shape. They're not all over the map. It gives the quarterback some confidence as he's going in there for the play. Well, we've seen a glimpse on this drive of what this young man can do. We've seen him do it with that rocket arm, and then we saw him run for eight yards on the last play. Second and two. Fires deep. A miscommunication, and it's going to be incomplete because his receiver hooked up, and he threw it deep for the flag. Yeah, but I, I, one thing you did see was one heck of a rocket arm. It was right there all the way in the goal line. And that miscommunication could have been an interception almost, but uh, I well, love their demeanor on this drive. But it was uh, second and two. So if you want to take a shot, that's the down to take your shot and see what you can come up with. So the Tigers come right back now with the third and about two yards to go for young Jalen Brown. The 6'2", 235-pound freshman from Austin. Has some time, fires, and it's an incompleted pass. Contact on the play, and it will be in pass interference against the Southern Jaguars. It's hard to see who it was. I think it was number 22, Glenn Brown. Yeah, 22. Glenn Brown was the guilty party. Pass interference, number 22 of the defense. 15-yard penalty, first down. Yeah, I want you to notice Jalen Brown. When he throws that ball, he's kind of like a, a little sidearm, and he's a slinger. He doesn't really come over the top. He always comes off his shoulder, uh, kind of a sidearm thrower. And usually a sidearm thrower tends to be a little more inaccurate than someone that comes over the top. So we'll look for that throughout the day. But so far, uh, he's pretty accurate when he decides he wants to go somewhere. And again, that was good coverage, tight coverage. Uh, but he threw it right in there. And again, the flag, thought that was a good call. So the officials making the call, calling it a spot foul, so it will be a first down for the TSU offense, and they are on a drive, approaching the red zone here. Ball resting right about the 28-yard uh, line. Brown winds up again, and that one is almost picked off by number 23, Chase Foster. Foster read that one all the way, made a big break on the football and almost came away with it. Phenomenal play by Foster, because he did really, he broke in the ball, but watch, watch him sling it, boom. You see, he doesn't bring the ball up in the, up in the, uh, by his, by his helmet at all. He just fakes the handoff, and then he just throws it sidearm like a bullet. Now it is, he is able to get the ball out quick like that, but whoo, dangerous. Second and 10, this time is Ja'Cory Howard. Slips a tackle in the backfield, still on his feet. He, Howard, picks up the first down, but we do have flags all over the field man it's laundry coming out from everywhere but what a run by Howard Wow I'm sorry I thought it was confetti coming down <laughs> actually after after the play there was some some fighting going on I was looking down for a number looked up and all I saw was yellow laundry and I think you're gonna the initial call will be a holding or a chop block is what I believe I saw and then after that I think there was some roughness probably on both teams But man, I'll tell you what, every ref, <laughs> every ref delivered their yellow flags real quick. Yeah, whatever it was, everybody saw it, because uh, let's see what Scott Johnson has to say about it, the referee. But uh, there's four flags down on the field. I don't remember, I can't remember the last time I saw four flags on the field at the same time. Yeah, I think they were trying to 
they were aiming at somebody's ear hole, probably. Well, there was a fight right after the play, or, or an altercation, we'll call it, uh, right around the 25-yard line. That's where the two of those flags are. I think the first two flags were for either holding or a chop block or a, or a, a crack a crack back. Um, that's what it looked like to me. So I think the, the play will probably come back. It's just a matter of what happens uh, on the after plays, on the uh, after the whistle. Yeah, they got a lot to <laughs> decipher on this play, I'm telling you. <laughs> That's when you just go, ah, we're going to do it over. <laughs> Can we do it do over? <laughs> I have to say, Butch, it's a beautiful night for football. It is absolutely fantastic to see fans uh, in the stands, spring football, and right here in the heart of downtown Houston. It's in the air, and I think it's all about where they're going to spot the football. And, and th that's what they're trying to get straight right now. And here's the call from Scott Johnson. No, he's still confused. <laughs> he's like, what? What? While we have the time, let me tell you, you can watch Tiger football in HD all spring long on AT&T Sportsnet, the home of Texas Southern football. Holding number three, the offense. There you go. Dead ball. Unsportsmanlike conduct, number three of the defense. Both penalties will be marked off. Will be a first down, Texas Southern. So the foul against Texas Southern was against King Blanton. He's a wide receiver who was in the ball game. He's number three. And number three is Tamara Smith for the Southern Jaguars. So I think what you have, what, is a 10-yard penalty holding and then a 15-yard unsportsmanlike. So you get, at the end of the day, it's plus five for TSU. Well, and it was such a nice run on the play by Ja'Cory Howard. I mean, he did a great job moving his feet in the backfield. Yeah, because it, it, it should have been stopped early, and he did a great job of just flowing off tackle off to that right side. And they had a good lane there. Good play call, good execution on it. Again, I say a lot of execution when I see something done well, because I'll tell you, you know, coaches call good plays a lot. It's just the players won't execute what they call, and I know they go nuts. It's all in the execution. And that's why you run something over and over again that you have muscle memory till it just, it's something you can do in your sleep. So the first down held up. TSU Brown looking for the end zone. Floats it high into the corner. And he's just a little too strong. He had Giles over there. Giles had a step or two. Yeah, and you could tell he knew, he knew exactly what he wanted. It was a good play. You're on the right hash, so you got plenty of room on that left side running that flag pattern. And, and again, just too much. He had the right amount of air, just too much ball there. And Giles did a good job, almost caught up with it. Chase Foster giving chase for the Jaguars, but he was beat on that play. The ball just had a little too much air underneath it. Second down now for TSU. This time Brown under a lot of pressure and he had to throw that quickly. He made the fake and then Southern came with the blitz and he barely had time. Jacoby Jones. One of the Jaguars, number 31, who put the pressure. Watch how fast he delivers the ball, even with people right in his face. And again, that should have been caught right there, but, but it's a bullet. I mean, I think it comes so fast at you. You got to react to almost defend yourself as a receiver. So now we're going to have a third and about 10 coming up for the TSU offense. Look for a slant pattern here. Cranks it out quickly. Has a completed pass. A nice job breaking the tackle is Jaron Johnson. And he has a first down, or he's very close to that first down for the TSU Tigers. Chase Foster there to make the stop. Yeah, I think he would have just cut to the outside. He had more room. He cut back inside. It's like he's a little bit short. Yeah, but I'm not sure why he cut back inside. He had to the outside. Fourth down and less than a yard for the TSU Tigers. And we have a timeout on the field. Texas Southern. The first charge. Yeah, that little, that little yard, he was short. He had that outside lane. I'm not quite sure why he, he cut back to the middle there. Uh, and that, that, that cost him the first down. But, but good catch, and he broke that tackle, which allowed him to even get that far. So nice job. This I, has been a huge drive for the Tigers, taking it all the way down there. Coach McKinney calling a timeout. 
wants to make sure they get just the right play because when you look at the sticks over there, it's about a yard or a little less than a yard. So they're, they're right at the sticks. Yeah, it's a good yard. I mean, it's, and again, I mean, they went for it on their own 29-yard line earlier here or maybe with 37 or something like that. But, but I mean, you know, they're not afraid to go for it. And, and when you go for it like that, you've got to have a play that you like and you feel confident in. It looks like they're keeping their offense still out there. Yeah, you're right, Jorge. On that completed pass, Jaron Johnson, for just a minute, it looked like he was going to pick up the first down and came very close to it. And so here comes the Tigers' offense. 136 to go in the first quarter, and for the second time on this drive, the Tigers will go for it on fourth down. What do you think, quarterback sneak? That's what I would do. He's a big quarterback. <laughs> Hands to Howard, off tackle, and Ja'Cory Howard picks up the first down for Texas Southern University. That's why I'm not a coach. <laughs> Great play call. Look at, look at that. that uh, I mean, what a hole. That was an absolutely phenomenal job. Drake so, centers. Well, Drake made, made up for that bad snap, and here we go right here. It was to Howard straight ahead, and he could not get it. Yeah, Drake Sanders was that right tackle. He's the yeah. one that cleared it up. Yeah. Nice Nate, job. Yeah, let's not, let me not do that to Drake. It was Nate Hines on the snap. Uh, yeah, the snaps, yeah. I was gonna... So we have Howard pushing it close to the goal line there. A good surge on first down and goal to go for the Tigers. Tell you what, when you get in goal line situation and you're in those trenches, man, that is all will. You have got to want to. Well, this has just been a great drive from the standpoint of mixing up the pass and the run. Brown hands to Ja'Cory Howard, and he's in for the touchdown. And the TSU Tigers are on the board. Ja'Cory Howard going off, ta off tackle and give that offensive line a lot of credit on that one. Yeah, no doubt about it. I mean, and I'll tell you, it, 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 Drake centers. That's not, yeah, Drake centers. I mean, just a just a great job burning off his tail there. Big number 77. Well, they found something over there, and, and Coach says let's take advantage of it because Drake's been opening some big holes, and Ja'Cory Howard is running extremely hard for that offense. So the touchdown goes to the TSU Tigers. Richard Garcia on to try to add on the extra point, and he does. And just like that, the TSU Tigers have fought to within two. Two points. <laughs> Should be 9-7. Yeah, no, they just corrected that on the yeah. board there. <laughs> I did the same thing. I'm like, wait, it's not. Somebody in the stadium is getting a little anx anxious, but we don't want to be that anxious. 9-7. The Southern Jaguars out in front after that safety. But what a drive by TSU in which the Tigers, 14 plays, 87 yards. It took them four minutes and 57 seconds. Ja'Cory Howard doing a lot of the work near the end. Oh, you know, again, you got to give credit to that offensive line, what they did, blowing out in there, getting it done. And again, what that does emotionally for your team, now they feel like they've got a momentum. Uh, and again, the play calling, the execution, uh, and, and I think Jalen Brown showed a lot of leadership in there, right? You, you talked about they were pinned deep. You, yeah. you don't want to do that to your young quarterback. And what he did was do what? He made some really good plays, good play calling, drove him down the field. And we, we got an example of just how strong his arm is. I mean, he has a gun. And he just drilled in a couple of passes on that drive that were outstanding. But you were talking about what have, uh, having a successful drive like that does for your overall confidence. How about the freshman quarterback? Yeah, to take your team, to march them all the way down the field and get a touchdown on the board. Well, and you start to see your team believe in you, right? Which increases your own confidence, and that's what happened. But I will say this. Look out when Southern's on defense later. I think you're going to see a lot more hands up in the air. He throws that ball pretty low since he's a sidearm thrower there. Garcia's kick is deep. And Shaiki Thomas on the return, trying to get around the outside. He does. He's over the 20 and dives over the 25-yard line out to about the 26. And that is where Southern will go back on offense. Well, nothing better than hearing that band start to rumble and get it rolling. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, what did we say? There's uh, 15 percent capacity tonight, and it, it kind of it has that football atmosphere like in the stadium tonight. It's good. Yeah, it's 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 really good, and then the fans that are here are active and loud, and so it's a great environment here at BBVA here in Houston. So the Southern Jaguars will start first and ten from their 26 yard line. They go to the jet sweep, and it's open. Number 28, Corey Williams. They ran that play earlier to the other side, had some success with it, and came back for a nice gain on the play. He's just shy of the first down, but that is the end of the first quarter. And it ends on a high note for the Texas Southern Tigers as they close with a big touchdown. Right now, Southern Jaguars out in front, 9-7, as we go to uh, timeout. it is for football in downtown Houston, Texas. You can see our score from BBVA Stadium. The Southern Jaguars clinging to a two-point lead, 9-7 over the TSU Tigers. Southern will start with the football to begin the second quarter. The Darius Skelton has gone all the way at quarterback, and he hands that one straight ahead. Just some power running there by the Jaguars. Yeah, I was expecting that, too. I, I, you know, how do you calm a game down when your running game's going well? and you feel like the other team's got some momentum, you run right at them. You don't run around them. You run right up the middle, give them a gut check. That's exactly what they did. Second down and about five. Julian Markintel helping out on the tackle there for the TSU defense. So now the Jaguars in manageable position here on second down. Skelton looking to pass. Has a lot of time. Comes back the opposite way. Finds a man, Marquise McLean, all by himself. And McLean takes it all the way down. He's near the 25-yard line before Marquise Walker pulled him down. But what a great design on that play. Or maybe he just checked everybody. Good read by Skelton. Skelton, the offensive line first, did a great job of giving him plenty of time, right? But Skelton did a great job. You know, everyone always talks about going through your reads. Right there, you saw him go through his reads. He went one, two, three. I think that was his fourth option right there, and he was wide open. So a big first down for Southern Skelton on the keeper this time. Has one man to beat on the corner, and he is taken down by Matthew Williams with a good stop. But, you know, Skelton, when you look at his size, 6'2", about 215, you know, he's a load coming around that corner, even though he is a quarterback. Yeah, he is. Is that him on the sidelines there? Or what? I think that is him, is it? It's an injured player down on the field, and it looks like a Southern player, but we can't see from our vantage point exactly where the number, but I don't see Skelton anywhere else, so. That's what made me think it's him. Uh, let's see. Well, look at that. He did the fake to the right there. Yeah, that's him. Kept the ball high. A big hit by Matthew Williams, but uh, Ladarius Skelton a little shaken up on the play. Like as he's he holding that right hand. Jogs back toward the sideline. You know, we talked about this guy because he's been the starter all last year, come back again this year from Pine Bluff, Arkansas. You know, his record from 7th grade through 12th grade only lost seven games. <laughs> wow. That's kind of an incredible record when you think about it. He's on the sidelines, and you're right over here. He looked like he was uh, trying to shake it off something with that hand. Yeah, he, he was he was holding it, something fierce. He may have landed on it backwards, but you'll see Lampley now uh, come in there. And again, he's no stranger for last, what, a week ago uh, playing? In his, in his replacement. John Lampley got to come in last week to shake off some of the dust. Fires over the middle, and he comes off the bench to toss a touchdown pass to Gerard Sims, the running back who circled out of the backfield and was wide open in the end zone. Yeah, that was missed defensively there. You can see him wide open. That that It opens like it parts the Red Sea there, just wide open. Uh, good ball for Owen. You got a touchdown. Well, and, and what a time to do it. You, you bring in your backup quarterback who hadn't played one down so far in this ball game. You come in and you throw and you get the touchdown. And I, and I think defensively, right, you think he's not going to throw. They're going to do something safe. And he goes right down the field on you. Cesar Barajas is on for the extra point attempt. His kick is up and it is good. And just like that, the TSU Tigers crept a little closer, and then the Southern Jaguars extended that lead a little bit after the touchdown pass from John Lampley, who we mentioned, we talked about him a little bit at the top because last week, uh, two weeks ago, he did get in and get some action, but that's number 24, Gerard Sims. He got the touchdown. 
We'll take a timeout with the Jaguars leading the Tigers 16 to 7. Southern Jaguars are just coming off a huge drive. Five plays and 73 yards on the drive. That was the big pass right there on the play that started it all for the Jaguars. And then John Lampley off the bench tosses it right there into the end zone. A beautiful pass to Gerard Sims. Just like that, 22 yards on the play. And the Jaguars were able to extend their lead. That was a blink of an eye, right? We just, we were, I don't think I was finished talking about how important the, the TSU uh, touchdown was. And next thing you know, the Southern's rolling right back. Their quarterback gets injured. You think, okay, what are they going to do? Are they going to be able to recover? The very next play, what do you do? Toss it in the end zone for a touchdown. A uh, huge, huge response for Southern. Basically telling the Tigers, hey, we own this game. Now, what's the response for the Tigers now? Well, you, you know, you could, you said it right there because the Tigers went on a 14-play, 87-yard drive, and they got that three-yard TD run from Ja'Cory Howard. Everything looks great. And then you said in a blink of an eye, Southern comes back. They go five plays. They go 73 yards in five plays, and just like that, it's 16-7. So here comes TSU again with the football. A great pass to Jonathan Giles, and he dives close to the first down for the Tigers. That's Jacoby Jones, who was near the play and made the stop for the Southern Jaguars. Man, Jalen Brown just, he just guns that ball. Another fake inside. Brown and boo, that ball was juggled around a little bit. And let's see, the officials are going to say it was a catch. Uh, Jacoby Jones almost got his hands in there. Look for a second like the ball could be up for grabs, but instead it turns into a completed pass. For a minus yard, though. Yeah. So that you should have dropped that one. <laughs> <laughs> but he was bobbling and had to come back for it because it's thrown so hard. So Tigers looking at a second and about 11 now. Jalen Brown in the pocket, has lots of time as he rolls to his right. Good pass to Ja'Cory Howard. And Howard tiptoes down the sideline before number uh, 47 was there, also to knock him out of bounds for the TSU title. Uh, Caleb Cal Carter on the play. Great catch by Howard. He showed real soft hands here. Caleb Carter, we've called his name a couple of times tonight. And Howard with a great run right there to get the first down. That was huge. Move the sticks. And again, so Tigers, I asked a minute ago, what, how would they answer? How would they react? And you can see right now, good play calling, good execution. And man, Brown has just got a gunslinging arm. Ladarius Owens goes in motion. Was looking at Owens and instead comes inside and completes the pass for the TSU Tiger. That's going to be a short gain to number 81, Jaron Johnson who does a good job of hauling in the football. Number 29, Adrian Rivers, also there for the defense. But that's what you want to do. You want to chip away at it, and that's what they did the last time they had the football. And the young man, Jalen Brown, doing a good job again. Brown again on second down, dumps it off to Owens. Owens trying to get around the corner, and he cannot do it as the Southern defense recovered. Yeah, Southern did a great job of just dragging out that, that play. He gave him no room. He tried to do something fancy, and that just wasn't, they weren't going to have it. Adrian Rivers, one of the defensive guys there. Ray Anderson also on the play to help out for Southern. So that will bring up a key third down for the TSU Tigers and young Jalen Brown. Tigers has three receivers to his left. Dumps it out high, and it's incomplete. He had to get rid of it quickly. It appeared to be movement on the line, but we have no flags down on the play, so that goes in the books as an incompleted pass. Yeah, good pressure from Southern making him, making him have to throw it. It was the first inaccurate pass, really, uh, that he's thrown in a while. So good job by Southern stepping up, getting some pressure on him, not allowing him to get the pass off, and you've, uh, you stop him. Good pressure on third down. That will bring on number 87. Sawyer Evans on for the punt. Tigers overloaded to the right side. Evans gets his kick away. Tigers will have a chance to get this inside the 10. And a nice job. Great hustle on the play by number 40. 
Terrence Franklin hustling down there to down that punt right at the 10-yard line. Yeah, he wasn't going to let it roll to see it, give it any chance to come back. He figures, that's good enough. I'm going to go ahead and down it right here. <laughs> that was a smart move because a lot of times those balls will have a lot of spin on them, and it'll come back the opposite way. But he did a good job right there. Let's look at some of the statistics tonight for Skelton. He's five or six on his passing attempts for 81 yards in that one uh, touchdown. And then Lampley comes on. He's one for one, and he has a 22-yard touchdown pass. <laughs> he's 100%. That is production out of your backup quarterback. Skelton, this time, hands off to Sims, and he is upended a big hit by the Tigers. Number 51, Tariq Cooper. Yeah, he's from Texas City, played at Blend, the junior. Tough player. It was definitely a tough tackle right there. So short gain on the play. It will bring up second and about seven for Ladarius Skelton and the offense. Has a man in motion. Skelton keeps this time. He faked the jet sweep and a fine defensive play by Markintel, number 54. Julian Markintel shooting the gap and doing a good job to stop Skelton. I'm going to say, the times we've, we've covered the Tigers and we've been here on these games, Markintel comes up at big moments and makes big tackles and, and really, like, just anchors that defense. A lot of what he does goes unnoticed because even if he doesn't make the tackle, he's forcing the guy to one of his teammates, which yeah. is always a good thing to do. Big third down now for Southern. Pressure on Skelton. He tries to get out of the pocket, and he does. Fires back across the middle. Incompleted pass and a good defensive play by the Tigers. Marquise Walker. Marquise Ooh. Walker, number 38, tattooed that receiver. They say you never should throw behind yourself, and that's, that's a good reason why you shouldn't throw back across the field. Yeah, I mean, look at this. But he was open, and bam, just perfect timing right in the back. So the Texas Southern defense rising to the occasion. Needed a huge stop on third down, and they came up with a good pressure on the quarterback to force Skelton to scramble out of the pocket. Perfect timing on that hit, though. So the Jaguars, Barajas gets the punt away. It's Osby Mitchell. Ball is loose. The ball is loose. The Jaguars say they have it, and now the officials say they do. That is a huge turnover right there for the Tigers. Wow. Yeah, that's one of those plays that can be deflating. Jamel Bird on the recovery. Jamel Bird makes the recovery for the Southern Tag Jaguars. But take a look. Osby Mitchell kind of had his eyes upfield, took his eyes off the ball. Yeah, you just can't do that. I mean, you, you, the, the, at the end of the day, it's got to be ball safety first, and then you, then you try to make your own magic. Again, the defense just came up with a great play, played fantastic. Now they got to do it again. They just got to keep their energy up. And for Southern, I think you're going to go deep. I think you're going you're gonna to attack them. Sudden change is what they call it in the NFL. You know, you're on the sidelines, you're getting yourself a nice drink of water, and then all of a sudden you have to go back on the field, and the Jaguars are right there all over Skelton again. Number 95, Viramontes Pippins led the charge, but there were a couple of maroon jerseys in the vicinity. Yeah, Tigers just, you know, they roared. They said, you know what, I, we just mentioned, you know, how are they going to react? You just got a big stop. Sometimes that's deflating. Right there, big number 95 says, no, don't come in my house. And Alex again, Prince also helping out on the tackle. Yeah, and they stopped him right from the beginning. There was no room for Skelton. That's a loss of five on the play. Second and about 15 for Southern. Tigers on the blitz again. This time, Skelton reads the blitz. He hits the man, the hot man, and it's a completed pass and a nice game for the Jaguars. Yeah, Jakari Benjamin came in there with that big, big hit. I thought he was going to loosen the ball up like they did last time. Watch him. Bam. I mean, it, it just like, you know, knocked the feet right out of him. But he did hang on to the ball, and that was a good catch. Big third down right here. Jaguars facing a third and five. And we have whistles and a flag down on the field. Yep. Ball start. Number 78, the offense. Five-yard penalty. Replay third down. 
They would get the call right there from Scott Johnson, our referee, and you could see all the TSU players pointing toward the Southern Jaguars saying it's against them. Yeah. <laughs> and now you got a third and ten, right? So now, now you, as a, as a defense, they're a little more predictable of what they're going to do. So you can, you can bend your ears back and go get them. This is where Skelton has been dangerous. Third down, 10 yards to go for the Jaguars. He's gotten out of the pocket before. This time he stays in the pocket, fires down the field, and it's intercepted by Texas Southern. A fine play by Marquise Walker. A big turnover by the defense, and they needed that one. Yeah, that was a miscommunication between receiver and quarterback. That was one of those, I thought you were going to go, and you stop and you curl. Kind of what we saw TSU do earlier today. And, and I'm telling you, man, that was just, and it, it's one of those ones where it was a great interception, right? But sometimes that ball's so open, you drop them. But he made sure he had the ball and actually got a pretty good return out of it as well. Well, it's one of those things, as Skelton had a perfect pocket. He had time to deliver that ball, but he was just high and off the mark. I mean, he was, it was just a bad pass. Yeah, I think he knew where he thought the receiver should be, and he was throwing to a spot, right? So Texas Southern will go back on offense. Jalen Brown gets it off, and it's a little strong, and he led his receiver just a little too much inside. Was trying to hit Jonathan Giles. Couldn't quite catch up with that yeah, one. Yeah, I remember earlier, I, I talked about it. When you get a sidearm quarterback that has that quick trigger like that, you can get to moments of being inaccurate. And, and a while ago, we saw the first inaccurate pass, and right there, it was inaccurate. Watch how quick, when, when he gets that ball, and he just, boom, throws it back and goes. There's not a long, you know, drawback. Brown this time, hands straight ahead to Ja'Cory Howard. And I'm sure what the Texas Southern coaches are trying to do right now is to keep Brown from becoming too hyped up. Sure. Trying to keep him under control. Like, we, we got this. You got time. We have a little under eight minutes, 7.50 to go here in the second quarter. And, and that's hard to do when you have a young man who's playing in his first ball game. And you don't want him to think he's got to do it all on his own as well. That's huge. Third down coming up for the Tigers in about eight. Fakes it to Howard. Under pressure, and Brown is pulled down. A fine defensive play by the Jaguars. And guess who? Jordan Lewis, number 32. He specializes in pressuring the quarterback. And you see Brown a little shaken up on the play. He's getting up slowly. And that is not good news for the TSU Tigers yes. as Brown tries to hop off the field, really. Yeah, it's his, he got bent a little bit in his left leg. I mean, not gonna, not gonna say what, you know, what type of injury it is, but I mean, certainly his left leg he was uh, favoring. Well, while the TSU medical staff, while they take a look at young Jalen Brown on the field, we're gonna pause for a timeout here in the booth with the Jaguars leading the Tigers 16-7 with 7-10 to go in the second quarter. as the Tigers get set to punt the football back to the Jaguars. If you're just joining us, Southern leading the Texas Southern Tigers 16-7 here in the second quarter. And the punt is away by Sawyer Evans. Takes a nice TSU hop, and it's going to be touched down inside the 10-yard line. So that is where the Southern Jaguars will start first and 10. And as we look to the sidelines, we've been trying to get an update on young Jalen Brown. And he's got a couple of his teammates tapping him on the shoulder there. And they're, they're talking to him on the sidelines. And we're not going to try to play doctors here in the booth. Uh, but he's up and he's walking around. And uh, he says he's fine. Yeah, it looks like he's moving much better than he was when he came off. I mean, right now he looks strong. Sometimes... Maybe you just get that little bug, but, I mean, he doesn't even look like he has a limp right now, and he's... And a first down for the Jaguars, and Julian Markintel is there to blow the whole thing up in the backfield as Ladarius Skelton tried to keep the football, but he, he lost a couple of yards, or at least a yard on the play. You know, I find Markintel plays almost his best games, best plays when they have the, the opponent pinned deep. You know, he, he really finds to make big plays usually in those situations. Second down and 11 for the Jaguars. Skelton fires a long out on the play, completes his pass, 
but Valian is going to come up a little short. Germant's Webb there to pull him down a couple of yards shy of the first down. So now we're looking at a big third and three with about six minutes to go here in the second quarter. That was a great play. Good pass. It was a long, it was a big distance when you go wide like that, but it, it picked up the necessary yards when now you got a manageable third down. Third and short coming up for Skelton. He hands inside, and the Jaguars will pick up the first down with that straight-ahead run right there. Number 24, Gerard Sims on the tack, on the carry. Yeah, Tim Walton Jr. there for, for the Tigers there with the tackle. So Skelton on first down. There's a nice fake. Comes back the opposite way. Throws across the field, and it's an incompleted pass. Matthew. Matthew Williams on the defense for the Southern Jaguars doing a good job but again you fake it one way he reverses out of the pocket that's something Skelton does very well because of his running ability yeah that was good pressure by Tariq Cooper though as well so that's gonna bring up a second down and 10 for Skelton and the Jaguars they come out with three wide receivers to his left. Last time they did this, they came back with a misdirection play the other way. And there goes Skelton the other way. Cuts it back in, but picks up a nice gain on second down. Nice job by Skelton. And again, that's what he does very well. Yeah, it was almost like a zone run for your quarterback there. They kind of... You had your lineman kind of push everyone outside, and then he looks like he's going to go to the outside, and he just cut right back inside, and there was just a, a seam. And that's what, six-yard pickup right there? Pickup of about six. Michael Batterjo on the stop for the TSU Tigers. And another crucial third down coming up for the Jaguars. Devon Ben in the backfield. Quick pass, and it's complete for a first down. He goes to Brandon Hinton on the slant pattern good job by skelton reading the blitz and it was alex prince who was there to make the stop but a good decision by skelton yeah and he just did when you get those nice quick great timing uh you know in in patterns like that i just think i just i think they're they're just almost unstoppable when it comes to defense like that jaguars hurry to the line they made their substitutions and you saw tsu substituting on defense Football is right at the 40-yard line. It's going to be first and 10 for Southern. Fakes the pass inside, and that was a dangerous pass. It's going to, going to be ruled incomplete. It, it should be offensive interference. Watch. I think it was number four who grabbed his arm and didn't let him make the interception. Well, it was Isaiah Hamilton who read the play and got up there quickly. Yeah, see him holding yeah. his arm? I mean, how is that not offensive interference? Yeah, I, I don't think you can do that. <laughs> but what a great play by Hamilton, a freshman from Channel View. I, Man, that was a quick recovery. He read the play. He broke on it. And I agree with you, Jorge. That one was missed. I, I mean, I don't know how he missed. Usually when you get a, you know, his arm and his turning around your defender <laughs> like that, I mean, he bent backwards. And the, and the ref right there was looking right at it, right in front of him. I, it's well, a bad call. it was a fine defensive play that wasn't really rewarded. Let's see what the officials are talking about on the field now. But he made a great read. That's one oh, of those that, that you you learn in the film session. Mm -hmm. And you, when you see your key, you break on the football. And he did a great job. Yes, he, he did a, a, a great job. And again, I, I kind of go back to that. You can see there's great coaching when you see that kind of execution because coaches are saying, look, here's what happens, you do this. And then they practice it enough where you can do it. Well, when he threw that pass, I was thinking, oh, that could be intercepted. I mean, that was, yeah. you could see Hamilton breaking on the football. And if, if not for that grab at the end, it may have been. Yeah, well, I mean, it turned his whole body where all he could do was use his left hand instead of his right to intercept it. I mean, I thought that was a pick six. So when it's all said and done, it's an incomplete pass, second down. 10 to go for the Jaguars. Skelton fakes to his left, comes back to his right, skies it down the field, had a man open, and he overshot him. Wow, he had his man, number 80, Tyler Kirkwood, with some steps out there, and that's the big bugaboo against Skelton. 
You know, we had Southern earlier this year, and we saw him miss mm -hmm. a couple of deep passes. Yeah, he had, he had accuracy problems through, through several parts of that game, but he was able to get it back together. And, and, and that one, for sure, was even a little too long, but it was also, he didn't give his receiver a chance to bring it in if it would have he would have caught up to it. One thing you've got to do as a quarterback, you got to put the ball in the field for a guy to get a chance to catch the ball. Well, and he had a good four yards of separation on that play. I mean, that's what you're looking for. So the Jaguars have a third and ten. Skelton forced under pressure, has a man that was open, but it was the pressure by the defense that forced the incompleted pass. Big number 95, Vera Montez Pippins playing a big game tonight. Yeah, he's been active, and he, and he, you know, a guy like him, he not only himself he got through, but he pushes the entire line back, which allows other teammates to be able to make some plays as well. Big, big stop for the Tigers right there. And now you got 341 now left in this half, and now you're looking for your team to go ahead and get this ball, get a good return, and try to make something happen. Yeah, Makai Hammond was open on the play, but because of the pressure, couldn't complete the pass. So Baraja gets his punt away, and the fair catch is made by Giles. A little contact on it, but no harm, no foul. Oh, well, they threw a flag. Oh, there is. Well, excuse me, I didn't see it. That's down there on Baraja's. I was watching Giles. So yeah. Giles was, was bumped on the uh, fair, fair catch, but also apparently the flag goes down near Baraja. Yeah, I, I'm going to go ahead and say this is an Academy Award-winning um, <laughs> uh, action here. I don't, I don't mean to be uh, rude here, but he just kind of bumped into him. He certainly didn't knock him Running out here. the kicker, number 13 of the, uh, the receiving team. That penalty's declined. It's first down. Yeah, because it's just a five-yard penalty right there. Yeah, because right there. it was running into the kicker. Right. So that they're, they're very lucky on that one. So the Tigers will get the football. 3.30 to go here in the second quarter. They trail Southern 16-7. Square was the big dude <laughs> that he ran into. Wow, look at that. Whew. Tigers back to the line quickly. Second down and about eight. Brown down the sidelines and he overshoot his overshot his intended receiver. He's trying to get that one to King Blanton. That was Brown going down the sidelines and he overshot his man, King Blanton. Nice coverage by Robert Ream on the play. So the TSU Tigers quickly with 2.49 remaining. They're looking at a third down and about eight yards to pick up a crucial first down. Brown turns and he hands it to his man, and that is Owens. And Owens is going to get the first down for the Tigers. You know, they come in with Howard, who brings the power and the punch, and then you go to Owens for the speed. Yeah, you know, right there, they were almost just saying, look, let's keep it and make them use a timeout. You know, maybe we won't get this first down, but what a huge play right there. Now they're going to go for it. Brown has a man wide open, and the pass is caught, and it's going to be a touchdown to Keelan Davis. Jalen Brown, after that big run for a first down with a beautiful pass for the freshman quarterback to Keelan Davis, and the TSU Tigers are on the board, but we have a flag down near the sideline. Near the southern sideline. Well, I don't think that'll affect the fact that it's a touchdown or not. I, I, yeah, it's not going to affect the touchdown here, I don't believe. What an absolute fantastic There's play no call. There's no on the play. The touchdown is good. You know, when you, when you grab a play like that, you know, on a third down, you get the big run, and then you come right back. And again, it, it just... It was a great run, a pattern run. The defender lost his, lost the receiver, and, and the throw was right on target. That pass was good for 54 yards from Brown to Keelan Davis. And what a job. You know, he was wide open, and he put that one right on the numbers. 
Not a lot of air under that ball. No, and that, that's that quick trigger he has. It was a, on a rope. So the extra point is good, and the TSU Tigers pull to within two points again after that big play from their freshman quarterback, Jalen Brown, as he hit Keelan Davis streaking down the sidelines. But the big run set it up. The run for the first down by Ladarius Owens. You can see it's the five-play, 76-yard drive, and then the big strike. Yeah, I mean, and again, I mean, it was that quick, and I said, you know, <laughs> they were running it right when I said, oh, yeah, and they're going to go big, and they sure did. 54 yards on the touchdown strike and the first touchdown pass for young Jalen Brown. I'll tell you, they can dance after that one. I'll, you know, and that just, the, the sidelines is electric. Now you got 228 left in this game. Now the Tigers defense has to step up and contain that Southern offense that, that is, has had you know, quite a bit of confidence here. We got ourselves quite a ball game going on now. 16-14. The Jaguars, the difference in this ball game is that safety. 228 to go in the second quarter. Yeah, it's been it's been a good one. And I think what, what the, the, the key I've got coming away from this game is is both teams at the critical times have answered the call, right? I mean the game could have gotten a certain way, one way, or you let the other team get momentum. And the last time the, the Tigers scored, the Jaguars went right back five plays, what, 73 yards? And, and it was a fast strike. What's cool about this matchup is the two head coaches are friends. <laughs> and so, you know, that's always nice when you play your buddy. It's nice to compete like that. Sure. And, and Coach Cat Clarence McKinney told me, he said, you know, when I got the job at Texas Southern, one of the first people to reach out to me and say, hey, man, congratulations, welcome to the SWAC, was Dawson Odoms from Southern University. Yeah, so here's the kick from Richard Garcia. Drives the Jaguars back to about the two-yard line. Shaiki Thomas has a hole, and Shaiki Thomas, it is a foot race down the sidelines, and he is going to take it all the way for the touchdown for the Jaguars. And just like that, we have another momentum swing in this ball game. You tell me the SWAC isn't exciting to watch. I will challenge anyone. That is just... I mean, you know, that, that special teams play right there, absolutely fantastic. Watch this. He sees a seam right there, bam, he's gone. Yeah, Shaiki Thomas, you know, he had one earlier tonight, but here, once he hit that seam, it was a matter of just turning it on, and it was a sprint to the end zone, and he wins the sprint all the way down to the end zone. Shaiki Thomas, 98 yards on the return as he takes it from his two-yard line. I tell you what, folks, better not go to the fridge because you are going to miss something in this one. That's right. My goodness. <laughs> you get up, go to the bathroom, you come back, and what happened? <laughs> wow. What a return, an electric return by Shaiki Thomas. I'll tell you, you were just, you know, from a southern standpoint, you just want to get yourself a, a nice return to set yourself up for a good drive. And how about that? That handles it real easy for you, right? <laughs> Just get a touchdown off my special teams, and then we'll make the Tigers go back to work and see what they have. Now, again, y y y we, we all know this. Thurman Morbley can return. <laughs> he, he is electric for the Tigers. So we'll see if he goes back there. I, eh, I don't see him going back there. So, But he's a, a pretty, pretty electric returner himself. Going deep for the Tigers, number 40, Terrence Franklin, and number 85, Osby Mitchell, are the two return men. But wow, I mean, the fans that came out tonight, they're definitely getting the, the price of admission worth of this one. You talk about a lot of action in this game. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I got to give some uh, some some shout out to the BBVA Compass, uh, uh, BBVA Stadium. Uh, they just done a great job of preparing it and, and having this ready for the fans and for us here in the broadcast booth as well. Rahas is getting a workout tonight. <laughs> you know, he's also punny. He was the guy on that roughing the punter, running into the punter, actually. Yeah. So the fair catch is made by number 81, Jaron Johnson. That's where the Tigers will take over. First and 10 with 2.13 to go in the first half. And from what we've seen tonight is uh, that's a lot of time. <laughs> yeah. That's uh -huh. an eternity. Yeah, no. 
<laughs> no doubt. I mean, you, you don't worry about when you score. You just go down there and and, and uh, attack. And, and we'll see right here. And again, again, it's another one of those things. How do you answer? I think the Tigers have answered well all night long. Expect them to do the same here. Jalen Brown, the freshman quarterback, has gone all the way for TSU. His first start as a collegiate player. Hands inside to Howard. And for a big guy who will punish you, check out the moves inside. He's got some pretty quick feet also. Yeah, and, and you know, the Tigers, this is the second time we've seen them. And, and I remember last time discussing the fact that they just seem to get stronger from an offensive line standpoint. They sure did. We got a man down right here. I think it's Howard. Yeah, I think so, too. Let's let's uh, see if we can get a closer look. It is Howard down on the ground at the end of that run. And we mentioned how hard he runs the football. He's a punishing runner. And your body takes a toll when you run that hard. Yeah, he, he did. I mean, he came down, you know. Ja'Cory Howard, as we take another look here, Jorge. Yeah. yeah, right, right there. Just puts him on his back and then, bam. And see, I think it may have made that last hit where he's kind of twisted there a little bit. Yeah, Chase Foster was hanging on and then he got another hit. But Ja'Cory Howard is a six foot, 220 pound sophomore, attended Aldean High School in Houston. Aldean? Yeah. And uh, I tell you what, Coach likes that tandem. He likes the fact to have Howard, who can bring the power, and then come, comes back with Ladarius Owens, who has the quick feet and a lot of speed to get around the outside. Now Owens will go into the backfield after Howard is escorted off the field. Yeah, he's kind of tender on his back there. They'll loosen him up, get him ready. Jalen Brown with an option pitch to Owens. He has a crease, and he high steps it right through there, and he goes knocked out of bounds near the first down. He's very close to the sticks. So Ladarius Owens taking the pitch. They mark him short. Second down and about two. Passes almost picked off and caught. A nice play by King Gladden. The young freshman quarterback showing off that arm strength. Fires a strike. The defender thought he was going to make an interception on the play. Adrian Rivers couldn't come up with it. Yeah, Jaden Hanna, though, stayed in there and got the tackle on that. Well, Rivers was on the tackle, excuse me, on the play. One of the Southern defenders tried to make a play on the football, came up empty, and King Blanton, number three, made the catch and got it upfield quickly for the, for the Tigers with 125, and the clock is ticking down to go in the first half. So time for Brown, fires for the end zone, and he almost had it. Giles had his hands on it for a second, and that was very close to being a Texas Southern touchdown. Yeah, you know, when you're a quarterback, you look for windows to throw the ball in, right? So that one a minute ago, that, that got him in there. There was That was a super, super tight window, and it's only because he throws it so fast that he got it in there. That one was a bigger window, and I thought he put great touch on the ball. He just could not haul it in. Giles just could not hang on to it, but what a good pass right there. Great pass. You know, he was throwing it to a spot, and they almost connected. Third down now for TSU in the offense. Pass is complete. Giles has that one, and we do have a flag down. Giles appeared to get the first down for the Texas Southern offense. He did, but we will see what the penalty flag is how about on the play. How about young Jalen Brown going right back to the guy who dropped the ball, probably <laughs> thought he should have caught a touchdown, and instead he turns around and goes right back to him. And he made a big play. I, I, and while the officials have a quick talk, let's uh, let's see. No, here comes the call. Scott Johnson is ready to give it to us. Pass interference, number three of the offense. The 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay third down. You know, that's probably one of those plays that everybody calls a screen that's not a screen. Let's take another look, Jorge. What do you think? I mean, it, we didn't see it far back enough, but I, I'll tell you, I think that's what they're... Uh, I didn't see it live, and I mean, uh, from up here, usually you can see those those illegal screens kind of coming. Well, it was a late flag, too, on the play after the Tigers had picked up the first down. So now you're looking at third and about 20, 22 yards. Handoff to Owens, and Owens is going to be spun down 
after a nice gain inside, but not nearly what the Tigers were looking for on that one. Number 53, Andre Jones made the tackle for Southern. Yeah, I think right here on a fourth down, they're just going to let the time tick off and maybe just throw, <laughs> throw one up there with a few seconds left. That would be a good strategy. And while we have a quick second, now it's time for our A Rocket Movers presents Do You Know TSU? How many appearances have the Tigers made in the NCAA basketball tournament? You want to take a guess right now? Just just throw out something? Of course, we're going to check back later in the game, so we'll know whether or not you were right. I'm going to say five. You know, I, you know, I can't answer it because I know the answer. Okay. But you're a little low. I'm a little low. Wow. <laughs> you're, you're a little low. <laughs> so 12 <laughs> seconds to go until halftime. TSU with the football. Staring at a fourth and 15 now. Maybe a little more. Let's say fourth and about 17, 18. It says 15 on the board, so I'll go with that. That's what it says on the board, but yeah. I'm looking at the sticks. <laughs> yeah, I know. It doesn't look quite right. but <laughs> That's a long 15. <laughs> it looks like 20. <laughs> it does. Yeah, I think that's 20. So it's fourth and a lot when the Tigers come back, and I think you called it. I think this is a good situation where they let the clock tick down, and they're going to take a shot at the end zone. And what I was surprised in, actually, that Southern just didn't call a timeout to not allow them to do that, right? I mean, if they would have called the timeout, you're too far to really do anything, and you don't really want to punt it, but why would you let them call a play where basically if they get it or don't get it, you only have two or three seconds yourself? Well, they are going to send out the punter. Instead, it will be Sawyer yeah. Evans coming on with 10 sec excuse me, 12 seconds to go here in the first half. So from a TSU standpoint, they're trying to pin the Jaguars back in their own territory and let the clock run out here on the first half. Yeah, and Southern's just going to play prevent defense, right? And they're going to say, hey, the one thing we're not going to give up is any kind of weird play and let the ball roll where it may. Sawyer Evans with the little pooch, pooch punt. Yeah. And he does his job. That one's going to be down right at the one-yard line. And the clock is down to one second, no seconds. That will be the end of the first half. And what an exciting first half it was. As both teams will take it to the locker room for the halftime. The Southern University Jaguars on top, leading yeah, Texas yeah. Southern 23 to 14. Yeah, they're going to they're gonna put a second back on the clock, Butch. Let's see, they're trying to stop them from entering the locker room. Yeah, they're going to make them take a snap. And I think that's big for, for, for TSU, right? You, they're on the one-yard line. You want them to have to take. They can't just take a regular knee right here. Well, you you, you can't take a knee. And, and, and there was one second left on the clock, and then it just it went away to zero. Uh, yeah. But I guess it was the, the whistle blew, and yep. there was some miscommunication there as to what was going on. So this is interesting. You know, if you're Dawson Odoms in this situation, do you dare try to throw the ball? I think you just quarterback <laughs> sneak it out of there. You got you got skeleton. You just big quarterback sneak it out of there, and you just go in the locker room. So here come the Southern Jaguars. No time left on the clock. This will take us to the half. The quarterback sneak, and skeleton does get it out of there. Good job. He uses his strength to push the ball forward. And that will take us to the halftime. 23-14, Jaguars leading the Tigers. My week. Welcome back to BBVA Stadium. 23-14, the Southern Jaguars leading the Texas Southern Tigers in what was a very exciting first half filled with a lot of big plays as we go to the highlight. Very, very exciting instead. And as the band plays on, it's a big month. We're going to take a look at women at TSU in sports and see all that they've been achieving on the athletic field.
My name is Ray. Welcome back to BBVA Stadium. We are at the half. And the Southern Jaguars are leading. The visitors are out in front, 23-14, over the Texas Southern Tigers. But what an exciting first half it was, including the debut of TSU quarterback Jalen Brown, the freshman from Austin, making his collegiate debut. I guess I need my mic on before <laughs> I get going here. <laughs> but I'll say, you know, Jalen Brown, impressive, right? Uh, uh, he's, you know, at the, at the beginning of the game, you could see he was a little bit rattled. I think the coaches did a nice job of, of play calling to calm him down, and his running backs helped him as well. When you look at his numbers and see what he did in the first half, 11 of 20 passing the football for 156 yards and a touchdown, that long strike, that was a beautiful pass. Oh, no question. He's got a super quick trigger. I, I, I've talked about it several times during the game. That was a big fumble that he had that was a mistake early. Let's take a look at some of the action from the first half. And as you can see, Skelton, we talked about him. We did not know who was going to start for Southern, whether it was going to be Skelton or John Lampley. Skelton got the start, did a good job. That's Sims bullying his way up the middle, and then there goes Skelton again. Yeah, the offensive line controlled the game early for Southern. They did. And then they did it passing. That's the touchdown coming up right there for the Jaguars, taking it in for the touchdown. The first score of the ball game, it went to Ethan Howard as he takes it in for the touchdown for Southern and Skelton it was a pretty pass on the play but then the Texas Southern defense came alive Matthew Williams with a big sack in the backfield yeah they answered the call we talked to this game's been about answering the call and they did just that Look well, at that run there. and it was a back and forth ball game throughout most of the first half the Tigers had a couple of long drives and this was a nice one we saw the young freshman quarterback Jalen Brown we saw his strong arm, and then we saw there him running the football, and then Ja'Cory Howard. Yeah, nice job there. And I'll say this. Once they got that snap situated early in the game, they had a couple of uh, bad snaps that were causing some issues with the offense. They got that down, and uh, they got their offense rolling. And then this was a wide-open pass to Marquise McLean. Skelton did a good job, though, finding the open guy. Yeah, he did. He did. And again, the offensive line gave him the time to go read four reads down. And then the touchdown, Lampley to Sims. <laughs> Lampley had just come in the ball game because Skelton had left, and he threw a touchdown pass. But then here come the Tigers again. Nice job here by Ladarius Owens trying to make something happen after Ja'Cory Howard left the ball game. But then Skelton again. The TSU defense got really, really tough on him, made it tough going. And yeah. that was the play that you thought could have been an interception. Yeah, it could have been a pick six. Here's a big play right here towards the end. Owens cutting around that outside, and that got the big first down, which lit up this play right here, Butch. Oh, beautiful strike. Jalen Brown has a wide open Keelan Davis, and he high steps it down the sideline for the Texas Southern touchdown. But that play was set up by that first down run by Ladarius Owens, and then the Tigers trying to come back for some more. That's another one, and he just about had Giles in the end zone. It was a good spot, an incomplete pass on the play, and that takes you to our halftime score, 23-14 Southern out in front. And as we look at the statistics, that's a pretty close first half. Yeah, it is. And, and again, it's about both teams answering the call each time. Look, total yards, I mean, you don't get much closer than that. Rushing yards were pretty even, although Southern, I thought at big times, controlled the game. I thought, you know, the Tigers at the end started to establish their, their rushing game, and I thought the Tigers' offensive line got stronger late in that second quarter. But again, you look at the passing, that's, that's you know, Tigers are a little bit on top there with a couple of deep throws, so. Well, we're expecting a very exciting second half to this ball game. We will be back with more from BBVA Stadium in just a minute. Tigers trailing 23-14 to Southern. minutes of halftime here at BBVA Stadium and of course the TSU Tigers trailing 23-14 the Texas Southern the Southern Jaguars actually had an electric kickoff return that went 98 yards that's really the difference in this ball game that and a safety yeah I was gonna say that and the safety uh, but special teams anyone that thinks special teams doesn't matter just take a look at what happened here 
I mean, they were trying to answer. We figured it'd be some kind of drive by Southern, but what happens? Boom, you just grab the ball and you take it and get seven points that way. That that just that's that's hard for teams to overcome, but the Tigers did a good job of of, of moving that ball. They just weren't able to capitalize and get points back on it. You know, let's talk about the two head coaches for a minute because we didn't get a big chance in the first half to talk about them. Of course, Clarence McKinney comes over, grew up right across the street from TSU, basically went to Jack Yates High School, played at Jack Yates High School, coached at Jack Yates High School. Then he goes on and has a, a very successful college coaching career, going to the U of H, Texas A&M, and then into Arizona. And now he comes in here and is making big strides with the TSU football team. Yeah, and I think when, when you look at a, a coach that, you know, has that much interest in the community surrounding the university, it, that just, you know, that that's just that kind of glue, glues people together, brings teams together. And again, I'll, I just think watching these teams play, both of them, and, and, and we'll, we'll focus on TSU, the execution and the play calling, and you don't see confusion within the team. They, they know where they're going. You got guys out there getting it done. Uh, they play hard. I think the tackling has been, I don't want to say spectacular, but it's been very, very good. And, I, and that's that is surprising across the board here in, in, in the spring. On the other side, you have Dawson Odoms, who is also good friends with uh, Clarence McKinney. Of course, Dawson Odoms has never had a losing season at Southern. He comes into this game. He's 8-0 and against TSU since he started his career over at Southern. So he's had a lot of success when he's had to come to Houston. In fact, the four games were in Baton Rouge, four games in Houston. So he's 4-0 and in Houston. Yeah, so... You <laughs> You know, when you get the, the, the type of rivalry that these is that we talked about in the open, and then you have that kind of success, uh, that, that certainly bodes well for your program. But, but I'll get back to the fact that they're friends. I mean, anyone that's ever, I don't care if it's chess, if it's, if it's basketball hoops or pig or horse, whatever you play in your driveway, when you're playing against your friend, there's always that extra oomph about it that you, you really, you know, and I'm sure his coaches are probably like, man, I gave him advice a few weeks ago. I probably shouldn't have said that because now he knows what I want to run here in this situation. You know, right? So you start out thinking yourself against your friend, right? Well, it's pretty, it's pretty interesting as we have 133 to go here in the half, a minute, 33 seconds. When you think about it, it's probably 60 degrees now. We're in Houston, Texas. It's the springtime, and we're playing football. And when you talk to both of these coaches about it, I mean, they were so excited to play this six-game season, you know, because they look at it the way they say it to me. It's, it's a chance for us to showcase our talent for the entire country. That's probably the most exciting thing for me about, about the SWAC playing uh, this time of year. There are a lot of people I know, a lot of friends I know that are watching these games that they want to get their football fix and normally they may not have been watching them or wouldn't have tuned them on or certainly not as much. Uh, and I think it, 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 you watch the excitement of the games we've called and we've, this is our third game, Butch, and each one of them have been very dynamic, have been very good and, and extremely competitive and well coached. And I mean, so it's a great opportunity to see it. And then, you know, what these coaches have done with COVID and all the different dynamics they've had to deal with, yeah. with, with getting groups. We heard the, the, you know, not too long ago, you have your quarterback room, right? So you only have one quarterback in the room with you as a coach. Everybody else on them, Zoom. The rest of them are joining in a Zoom. How, yeah. how difficult is that? Any teacher out there that's been teaching during these times know how difficult that's been, but you're grabbing that with the quarterback room, with your linebacker room, with your defensive lineman. That is, that is extremely tough to keep people together. And then, you know, Football is a game of that camaraderie and that in your face and you know and that kind of stuff And you've got to be able to still coach get the intensity going with all those type of increments You're trying to keep your guys safe from COVID Give me your thoughts on the first half from young Jalen Brown You know a couple of shaky plays early that were beyond his control nothing He was doing a right. couple of bad snaps some uh, big hits some things going on But give me your impressions of his first half his first first half yeah, no, I mean, he, he's obviously a, 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 a solid quarterback who's got a lot of confidence and was able to grow it throughout this game. Uh, and again, those snaps early, he had, what, four bad snaps out of like six or seven in a row and one cost him the safety, which was really tough. But I liked his demeanor. Uh, the only thing that troubles me is the way he pulls that trigger. He's got, you know, he doesn't carry the ball high at all. He's got it real, real low to his shoulder. And when he pulls that trigger, he does this little movement where he comes back. And sometimes that can uh, mess up your accuracy as far as rhythm goes. Uh, but I like the way he throws the ball. I think he throws an extremely hard ball. And I'll tell you what, if you're one of his receivers, you better be ready. Here's his numbers. Jalen Brown, 11 of 19 for 156 yards and that 54-yard TD pass. 
So that was a nice strike there. That was the only pass Keelan Davis caught in the first half, but it went 54 yards for a touchdown. And on the rushing side, Ja'Cory Howard, 10 carries for 49 yards, almost five yards a carry. And we are underway here in the second half. Short kickoff goes to the Jaguars. That'll be a fair catch and a late hit, but no flag on the play. That was number four, Hinton, who made the catch for the Jaguars. Brandon Hinton was the guy who made the fair catch there, and that is where Southern will start first and 10 with the football. Yeah, he made the fair catch signal there, but I guess he forgot and tried to run <laughs> with the football, and that never works out very well. No, no, and then uh, TSU let him know it, so there was a, let's just say, some good conversation down there <laughs> right after all that. The Jaguars will come out. They have the ball offensively first. Skelton, 6 of 11 for 94 yards passing, but you can't get his whole story unless you look at his rushing and he had eight carries for 25 yards so he's always a balance attack a little bit of passing a little bit of running as the Jaguars start first and 10 from the 27 yard line Skelton option to the right side breaks it clean Skelton goes way downfield that is a 26 yard gain for Ladarius Skelton and he came he runs that option so well for the Jaguars yeah and they blocked it fantastic but if we get the replay look at Tyler Kirkwood their receiver way out there watch him. We haven't got to him yet he was blocking out there the entire time which allowed that play to get even deeper so the Jaguars started off with a big first down Skelton going all the way at quarterback Hands it inside, and that time the TSU defense steps up and makes a big play. Tigers number 41, DeMontario Anderson made the stop. Yeah, how well do you recover from big plays like that? And then Tigers real quickly gathered themselves back up, make a good stop to put them at a long second down. Second and eight, coming your way for Skelton and the Jaguars. This time the handoff goes to Ben, and the big fella powers his way forward. Devon Ben goes, gets it close to the sticks, but it appears he's about a yard shy, making a couple yards shy getting that first down. So a quick third down. Southern gets to the line in a hurry. Skelton trying to go quickly. Turns, fakes it to Ben. Skelton keeps, has some room, and he also has a first down for the Jaguars. Number 51, Tariq Cooper there to make the stop. Yeah, I was going to say Skelton's doing a nice job of really riding that halfback in there, making the defense have to hit the halfback so he's got some room. Devon Ben in the backfield with Ladarius Skelton at quarterback. He has three wide receivers out to his right. Every time they've used this formation, they've come back the opposite way. We will see what Skelton does this time. Puts Ben in motion. Fakes it that way. He comes back, has a hole, and they're doing a good job with creating that motion, getting everybody on the right side of the field, and they're letting Skelton keep the football as Tariq Cooper again yeah, on they, the stop. They get the defense. They, they get them for the defensive side flowing left, and then they cut back. So as offense, they, they get all their offensive guys going to the right, and then he just cuts it right back just like you said. He went to the weak side. Second down and short for Southern. Skelton looks to the sideline. And watch Mark Hill here. Skelton fakes it to Ben, pulls it out, keeps around the right side. Ladarius Skelton is in for the touchdown. However, there is a flag down on the play. They threw it near the line of scrimmage, and that's usually bad news for the offense as Matthew Williams was trying Holding to corral him. Number 82, the offense. There's Scott Johnson. Yard penalty, replace second down. Our referee, Scott Johnson, with the call, and uh, he ran. He threw the flag, so yeah, he, knew, yeah. he knew what he was calling. Skelton <laughs> runs that play so well. Oh, he does. Look at that, but you can see the holding right there. He, he, he curved him inside because he was holding, no doubt about it. But man, he, li he likes that. You can tell he's so comfortable doing the option. He does such a great job on that zone read because he actually puts the ball in there. 
Mm -hmm. And then he t yanks it away. I mean, he rides it until the final second. So uh, that puts a lot of pressure on your running back, actually, because he has to tr handle yeah. the football without dropping it. So second down coming up here, and the handoff straight ahead. And right now the J Southern Jaguars are just pounding the football right up the middle. Yeah, and if you watch him hand off that ball right there, Butch, he still rides the ball all the way in there just like if he's going to pull it out each time. That is number 25, Rashad Muhammad. And now we're looking at a third and short for the Jaguars. Yeah, Southern slowed the game down by lining up first, then they looked at the sidelines and get the, get the, get the call. Yeah, this drive has been... All Ladarius Skelton so far, and he's going to keep again, has a hole, does a good job of picking the open spaces, and Ladarius Skelton picks up another first down for the Jaguars. And I'll tell you, if you're a Southern fan, what you're even happy with right there is not only did he get the good game, the good run, but he didn't take a shot. That last little spin move he did right there saved him from getting a big shot, getting a big hit. And there is another injured player on the field for the TSU Tigers. Trying to spot who it is. I think it's Isaiah Hamilton. Yeah, I think that's who it is. Isaiah Hamilton, number 26. And three seconds back on the game clock. So it's kind of funny because I was watching him. He, he went down after the play was over. As you see, the medical staff from Texas Southern checking him out. And while we have a minute, let's check back in on our A Rocket Movers. Do you know TSU? I asked you before, Jorge, how many appearances have the Tigers made in the NCAA basketball tournament? You said five. And I was wrong. I'm going to let you try one more time. S since you said I was so wrong, I'm going to go with like nine. We'll now. do it like the price is right. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to go nine. <laughs> let you up, and it is nine. Hey! Tigers have nine appearances in the NCAA March Madness tournament, the second most in the SWAC conference first down and 10 to go for the southern jaguars with the ball resting at about the 14 this is sims with a nice cut and sims takes it in for a southern touchdown good initial surge by the offensive line and then he just made a great cut that, that's exactly right the, the offensive line just stayed on their defender didn't let him up and he made set up his blocks watch right there boom cuts inside he does one more cut right there in the end zone untouched and, and gets tackled in the end zone. Even though the, Jag uh, the, the Jaguars lost that game to Arkansas Pine Bluff, Gerard Sims had a huge game, and now he's getting his touches here in the second half and making some big plays for Southern. So Barajas is on to attempt another extra point. Good snap, good hold. His kick is up, but we do have whistles on the field. Ball start. Number 92, the offense. Five-yard penalty, will retry. That's the second one on a PAT attempt for Southern, so. Yeah, those will, those will give you ulcers when you're a coach, those kind of things. I'm also noticing out on the field, Jorge, the wind is picking up a lot there, which I don't, you would think that might affect the passing game a little bit here in the second half. Yeah, we can feel the breeze hitting us now. It, it wasn't hitting us earlier in the game, and now it's kind of coming in the booth. It's a good thing you like the cold. Yeah, it's down to 55 degrees. I like the cold, but I don't know if I want to go much lower than that. <laughs> Barajas' kick is good as he puts the extra point through, and the Southern Jaguars are now out in front 30-14. We have 10.44 to go in the third quarter. We're just getting warm up, folks. Stick around. And it covered 73 yards. And then finally, most of it was done by Skelton. But at the end, as they got closer, you can see Skelton right there picking up all that yardage. At the end, it was Sims taking it in. Yeah, I mean, they were very methodical throughout this drive, and it's the second time they've done these 73-yard drives, if I'm not mistaken. Tigers on the kickoff return here in the second half. It's number 40, Terrence Franklin, who brings the kick back, and they will start at first and 10 with the ball resting near the 20-yard line. 
And so now it's, it's an interesting situation. It's 30 to 14 now in the ball game. And we will see we have a freshman quarterback for the TSU Tigers. This is a situation where you can expect the Jaguars to start trying to put a lot of heat on him in this ball game since we're in the third quarter. First down, turns and hands it off to Ladarius Owens. And Owens with a little counter type play right back across the middle, picked up right at 10 yards and he actually moved the sticks. So it's a first down for the Tigers, Jacoby Jones making the stop for the Jaguars. Tigers come right back to Owens and this time there's not as much room in the end as he is corralled by a lot of white shirts over there. Yeah, I like the intent of the Tigers here. I was going to say, I mean, I think I think you, while the scoreboard, you know you need a lot of points. You're still in the third quarter. You just got to play your game right now. If you start playing the scoreboard, you're going to ask your young quarterback to do too much, and you could get in trouble. So I, I think you really just just play the game, and later on you see where, see where you're at. You, yes, you get a score here. You are right back in. It's second down and 10. The pass to Giles, and he dives forward. He will have about eight yards on the play. So the young quarterback, Jalen Brown, and of course tonight, Jonathan Giles has been one of his favorite receivers. Yeah, you, when you get that little special connection with one of your receivers, you just kind of know where they're going to be and know what's going on, and it just makes you comfortable as a quarterback. Big third down for the Tigers. Brown steps up in the pocket, rolls out to his right, finds a man near the sideline. That's King Blanton. And he got both feet down, and that's going to be another first down for the Tigers. Yeah, did a nice, nice footwork there near the sideline. He sure did, but Owens right there on that blitz pickup right there allowed that play to happen, and it, just a, man, a rifle of a throw. i got to tell you, I mean, you got to really cool your hands down when you're catching the ball that he's throwing there. It's a rocket. Tamara Smith got him out of bounds, but not before he could get the first down. Tigers on the move. We have a flag down. Owens with another giant hole right up the middle, but the flag came right in that area where you usually are guilty of holding. Yeah, don't look now, but Jalen Brown's limping on that right. Nice start. Number 62, the offense. Five-yard penalty. First down. Coach. So that will back the Tigers up five after that penalty. Just a quick start. Yeah, watch Jalen Brown there. He's, he's, he's limping pretty heavily on that left leg right now. He did it on that play. You could see him right there. Well, he left the game early uh, in the second quarter and then shook it off on the sidelines and came back. Now he has a first and 15 to go. Gets it out near the sideline. It's a completed pass to Keelan Davis. His second catch of the ball game. That's going to get some of that lost yardage back. Yeah, but he, he is not. Watch him pull this trigger. How he, his whole body just jerks back and then he just rifles it out. But the ball doesn't really come out. It's shoulder high uh, when he throws it. But man, he puts some really, he kind of twists his body when he, that's why he's got so much power behind that throw. Second down now. Brown has a nice pocket, steps up, and now it disappears. He had a little time, but not for long. He ran out of time. 91. Latrell Johnson, one of the Jaguars in the backfield. Several players are there celebrating. Yeah, but the way he's moving, you you got to have him. Uh, I think you got to really have timing patterns. And again, I, I like the, the, the slants inside where he can see his receiver. 96, Jalen Ivey also in the backfield on that play. And then another big defensive play by the Jaguars, number 92 making a big stop in the backfield for Southern. It's Colin Givens there. You're right, big number 92 there made a nice big, big tackle there. And again, you can see, you can see uh, Jalen uh, Brown yes. ripping on the way out. I'm sorry, that's my fault. That was Jordan Lewis. You know, I'm dyslexic down there. I thought 92 was 32. Jordan Lewis on the stop on that big run. Uh, he's been all over the place. He is a young man that plays some outstanding defense for Southern. Makai Hammond goes back to return the punt now as TSU has a fourth and long to go here. So that will bring on Sawyer Evans to punt the football away. Gets a nice kick. Fair catch is called for and made by Hammond. And so the ball goes back over to the Southern Jaguars. Yeah, the Tigers defense here is... Quite frankly, it needs a turnover. They need to stop them cold and get a turnover. You can see some frustration along the sidelines of, uh, uh, of the Tigers right now. 
and they have got to just get their, get their momentum, get their mojo going again. And, and I would expect Southern to be coming at them hard here, just hammering them just like they did the last drive. You look at some of the preseason all-SWAC players, and you look at TSU, they got Michael Batajo, the defensive end, number one. Preseason all-SWAC, Richard Garcia, the kicker. And, of course, Dominic Franklin, the running back also, who's hadn't played tonight, but... Uh, you know, the right, the defense has to come up, but it's Sims slipping away in the backfield, and he picks up a first down with a gain of 11. Yeah, you're right. Some of those Tigers have to step up right now, and they have to put it on their shoulders and make a play. Southern back on first and 10. You know, the Jaguars have averaged right around 27 points a game. So they've surpassed that tonight in the spring. Uh, but the problem has been they've also given up 27 points. So yeah. here's Skelton trying to pass it on first down. Under pressure, that's going to be a hole. He does complete the pass. It stepped out of bounds is Kendrick Jones. But we could see that hole. <laughs> if we could see it from here, the officials could see it down there on the field. Uh, sometimes they can't because they, they missed that, uh, that, that pick six. Holy. <laughs> Number 82. I'm still offense. mad about that. It's a 10 yard penalty. Replay first down. The guy being held was looked like it was DeMontario Anderson in the backfield. Number 41. <laughs> we got Tex or Rex sticking yeah. his head in our booth. I'm not sure which one it is. <laughs> he gave us the old, uh, the old hello. Big for big long first down. Now the Tigers' defense, are, they, they've got a hold here. Well, that penalty pushed the Jags way back to near the 30-yard line. Skelton dumps off a screen pass, has an open man near the sidelines. He cuts it back inside. He's going to be very close to a first down, and he didn't quite come up with it. That's number 21, Craig Nelson, with a nice job on the screen pass. Yeah, the screen pass, and I hate to say this, but Tigers' Jared Craig here. Watch this right here. Jared Craig goes inside instead of outside, and that allowed that big lane there, and it was just great running. Yeah, that was a perfect call, perfect down for a screen pass, and it paid off big, so now you got second and about four yards to go for another first down for Southern. You know, this series dates all the way back to 1947. Whew. I mean, that, that's a lot of history there. Yeah, I was going to say, a different world back then, too. Hand off to Nelson again, and he picks up the first down and a lot more. Matthew Williams finally knocked him down, but that's a gain close to 20, yard line, 20 yards right there for Nelson. And again, the, the Jaguars' offensive line uh, just can't say enough about what they're doing. They're really dominating. You're seeing them staying on blocks. You know, and as a defender from the Tiger side, I mean, you know, I was, you know, and as a defender from the Tiger side, I mean, you know, I was, you always hear, don't stay blocked, right? <laughs> That's what the Jaguars are doing. They're, they're staying engaged. First down for Southern. Nelson again, third consecutive carry, and another big gain for Nelson. Craig Nelson, the 5'10", 190-pound redshirt junior from Miami. It's the first time we've seen him in this ball game. He's making a big impact in the second half. Yeah, I, I can tell you, I don't know what the, I'm trying to get a stat here about the average yards of uh, rushing, but I'll tell you, it's starting to add up with the Jaguars. They're having a whole lot of success, a lot of eight-yard runs, seven, six-yard runs. Well, Southern has been operating in the second half almost exclusively on the ground. They've been getting big chunks on the ground, and there they go again with another run. And another big gain, this time by number 33, Travion Benjamin. Travion Benjamin getting his first action yeah, of the, the night. Counter, the counter right there like that. That's fantastic. You actually had... Yeah, Texas Southern calls a timeout because they know they got to stop them from getting a touchdown here. I think it's important to get everyone together, give them a breath, kind of re-energize your defense. They're, they're playing on their heels right now. And you kind of say, hey, guys, here's what we need to do. Here's where it's at. Gut check time. Kind of go through a couple of keys. And Coach McKinney wants to remind them, hey, let's, let's stiffen up against that run. Last year, Texas Southern and 2019, because we didn't play in the fall, so 2019, they allowed almost 258 yards a game. So 
you know, that's a big deal for them. And, and they've done so well up to this point as far as stopping the run. Well, let me remind everybody, don't miss the next TSU football game here at BBVA Stadium as the Tigers will take on the Tigers from Grambling. That is on April 3rd. That game will be at 7 o'clock. Tickets are on sale now, so log on to TSUsports.com today for your tickets. Always a lot of fun when the Tigers play the Tigers as Grambling comes to Houston. Skelton with a pass, has his man wide open. That's Ethan Howard, and the big tight end bangs his way into the end zone, man. He is a load. When you look at Howard, 6'3", goes about 2'10", but he looks bigger than that on the field, and he took that one in for a touchdown. But we, are there, is there another flag? There's a referee down. Let's see, that's what it is. Not a flag down. We have a referee down this time, an official, and he's laid back on the sidelines. That, that could be a very serious thing. Yeah, he's he's uh he's hurt. But a good job by Skelton on the touchdown pass. You know, they softened up the defense with the run and then they came away with a nice T D pass and What was the timing of it too? You just mentioned softened them up, right? So what they did was, I mean, they just pound, pound, pound. Yeah, the Tigers call a timeout, so you know they went in there and started talking about the keys of the run, right? How they need to address that run and stop them. And then they come over with a beautifully timed pass to that tight end the same one they ran earlier in the day earlier in the game to get a touchdown he seriously hurt i believe well it looks like it could be an ankle or a knee uh, from what they were looking at and they had that propped up there and let's see they're trying to help him up now you know it's a it's a dangerous job being a referee i Ooh. mean it's just literally you're in the wrong place at the wrong time the minute you step on the field you got 250 300 and something pound men running around you and you're supposed to stay out of the way but see everything at the same time? Oh, that's a great sign right there. Yeah. Helping him to his feet. Is he jumping on that or is it just one leg? He's shaking it off. Look at that. It's always good to see somebody pop up after something like that. Guys, can we take another look at that again and see if we can see exactly what happened to him over there? Uh, but that is really good news. Scoring drive, as you can see, Craig Nelson contributing on the drive. So did Travion Benjamin. Six plays, 71 yards, took him 312. And then there's a touchdown strike to Ethan Howard. 18 yards on the play for the big fella, his second touchdown of the night. So the TSU Tigers call for the fair catch. So they will have the football back in business. At about the 25-yard line. We're exactly at the 25. I, I've noticed as this game has gone on, and I don't know if it, but our friends on the chains have gotten slower and slower as this game has gone. <laughs> well, maybe it's gotten colder I, and colder. I'm always than watching the chain, and it's like, you know, hey, it wears everybody out, man. It's a tough game. It's a workout for everybody involved, even if you're over there on the chains. Yeah, so Brown has an open receiver. Nice move. He comes back inside, and he'll be close to a first down. 81, Jaron Johnson there, showing some strength and some power. Yeah, those kind of plays like that where, you, you know, you, the score is what it is, but you still got players fighting so much. Watch him just, just relentlessly just keep pounding in, try to get that extra yard. Straight ahead, they go right up the middle to... Uh, it's good to see Howard back in the ball game, Ja'Cory Howard, but not much room there. He's stacked up in a hurry. I'd like to remind everyone you can cheer on the TSU women's soccer team at Durley Field as the Lady Tigers take on Alabama A&M. That's Friday, March 26th at 7 p.m. Admission is free, so go out and support the Lady Tigers. Go out and yell. Second down. Jalen Brown firing downfield, and it's high intended for Jonathan Giles, an incompleted pass. Yeah, and Brown did a good job. The, the little fake pump bought him, and it opened up his receiver right there watching that little move, but he just off target. Cordell Caldwell on the coverage, the senior for Southern. He's actually from Pearland, out of Pearland. He's from Houston, out of Pearland High School. 
Good coverage on the play. Third and ten coming up for the Tigers. They try to go inside to slip off the quick handoff. And the Jaguars would have none of that. Yeah, it's big Jalen Ivey, isn't it? Did a good job, that front line, of staying home and waiting for something to come back their way. So on fourth down, that will bring up Soria Evans again, the punter for Texas Southern. Yeah, that's not what they were looking for right there. In case you're wondering, uh, Sawyer Evans must have had a good game punting the ball against Prairie View because for that game, he wore number 73, and now he's upgraded to 87 for tonight. <laughs> I will say I'm confused on how many times these guys change numbers. <laughs> High punt. <clears throat> way up there. Takes a Texas Southern bounce, though. Goes all the way back, and it will be down at about the 22-yard line, so that's where we will see Southern operate on offense again. That was another good punt. So you're saying his number's going to go up next next week? Oh, he probably be have number one next week. It's kind of like <laughs> you get to pick you pick your number according to performance. Is that how it is? You know, I, I think it's kind of cool that you got, you know, back in the olden days, way way back days when mm -hmm. I played, you had to stick to certain numbers. I think it's cool now. You can have a defensive end with number one. You know, you can have a linebacker who wants to be number eight or number 16. I mean, you know, let the guys have some fun out there. I, I think that's pretty cool. So Southern comes out, first down and 10 yards to go. Handoff goes to Nelson, trying to get outside with it, and he's finally forced to cut back in. And it's a tough three yards inside, maybe two-yard gain on the play for Craig Nelson. So you mean to tell me when you played at McNeese, they didn't look at you and say, I'll send door. I don't care what number you want, son. You wear what we give you. That, that's probably more like what it was. That, right? that kind of <laughs> probably how it worked out. I think I, one day I went to my locker and number 86 was in the locker. I think that's kind of how <laughs> okay. it worked out. So that's a good number. <laughs> you didn't get a request or anything. No, right? we, we didn't put in requests back then. It didn't. <laughs> that wouldn't have been a good idea. Second down and eight for the Jaguars. Nelson again doing a little dance in the backfield. Finally sprints forward and a good job by the TSU defense. Stopping him right there. They're battling. I mean, I, <clears throat> they are they are battling in there. And I'm telling you, Southern's making them have to show up every single play. Looks like it was Gabe Smith helping out on the tackle there. Freshman defensive end. Big third down. Third and about five. Tigers in a hurry to get off after that one. Krishan Frazier. Yeah, he's already showed he's coming off that edge. They go to Nelson. He tries to get wide, and he could not turn the corner. Good job from behind by the TSU Tigers, doing a good job chasing that thing down. Big Tyler Martinez. Tyler <laughs> Martinez. He, he got behind the play and didn't give up on yeah, it. Yeah, watch him. He just, he just, I'm not giving up. I'm going to go get it. Boom, dives in there. Kind of helps out, but 80, is it? That's a good hustle by the big fella. Tips the scales at about 240 from Umble, 6-2. Ran him right into Pippins because Pippins wound up doing the work there too. So Pippins has had a great night. He does. He has. He has. Vera Montez Pippins. And he has done a great night. And that takes us to the end of the third quarter with the TSU Tigers coming up with a big stop. As we look on the scoreboard and get ready to go to the fourth quarter, Southern Jaguars out in front, 37-14. And the Jaguars punted away to start the fourth quarter. Giles retreats and makes a fair catch for the TSU Tigers. So they go back on offense. They'll have the ball resting at the 24-yard line. And even though the Tigers are down now, I mean, th there's a lot that the coaches are looking at trying to get out of this ball game, especially from young Jalen Brown, who can learn a lot at this point in the ball game. Straight ahead, they go to Howard. And boy, I tell you what, the defense is not happy to have to come up and hit that big fella. He can punish you. He Caleb can. Carter on the tackle. 
Yeah, and I, th I think it's important for, for the Tigers right now to just, you, you mentioned it. I just think you just call the game. You, you call, you, you, you mix it up, run, you know, pass. You, you run with some intensity. Uh, you know, I, I'd have the pace a little bit, but you just keep, you mix it up so your quarterback's not having to carry the load. Brown completes his pass. Fighting for extra yards over there for the Tigers is number three, King Blanton. He's caught a couple of balls tonight. And you can tell the Jaguars are loosening up just a little bit defensively, right? Which is a smart, smart move. So they're laying off a little bit. I think the Tigers should just take what they're giving them. First down. Brown has a man wide open. That's Osby Mitchell. And Osby takes it all the way deep in the Southern Territory. And he's finally dropped at about the 22-yard line. But the young man, Jalen Brown, does a great job of seeing the field. And when I said Southern was backing off, I didn't mean they should back off that much. He was wide open. Instead of taking the outside, he just went right inside, took a big hit there. That is Jacoby Jones hanging on. First down and another completed pass to Mitchell near the sideline. So you see Jalen Brown developing some chemistry with Mitchell. Yeah, what Jalen Brown did too, his his first option, he, he left that first option and went down to Mitchell. So good job of, uh, of, of, of reading the field. Goes to Mitchell again. Mitchell diving down to about the three-yard line. Oh, they're marking that at the five, Butch. It's a bad mark. Oh, maybe they said his knee was down. He extended, but they're bringing it back. David Marsh doing a really good job with the play calling on this drive. I mean, they, mm -hmm. they have moved the ball up the field quickly. Second down and goal to go for the TSU Tigers. Brown floating in that pocket, throws over the top, and he had Giles. That was a tough pass, but he had Giles about to break open there in the corner. You can tell he likes Giles. There's just something he knows that Giles is going to get where he wants him. And again, that ball was, was oh, it was close. Just too much for Giles to reach out for, but he certainly, he was just off on that. Well, one of the things Coach McKinney told me was guys like Jonathan Giles have done a great job of helping the young quarterback. They have a little experience. They've been around, and there is Ladarius Owens. He's been around a little bit, had a great season last year, hops in for the touchdown for Texas Southern. So Ladarius, Ladarius Owens getting into the end zone. Watch his cut right here. Dead to rights right there. No. Boom. Cut it right back inside. Touchdown. And again, that's that speed you talked about earlier and his agility. I mean, he just changed directions. And again, I mean, he saw the opening. That ball wasn't designed to go that way, but he took it. That's one of those plays, though, if you're the defense defender on that, you hate to sit in that film session tomorrow oh. because nobody blocks you. Oh, yeah. But no. you can't catch air. <laughs> so yeah. It was a great move, and the Tigers will go for two. Brown with a little reverse to Owens and a little trickeration there from the TSU Tigers wow. at the completion. I actually thought the, the guy who caught the ball had the best angle. <laughs> Watch it right there. Oh. TSU Tigers with a touchdown on the board. Closings to within six more. Jaguars still out in front. We don't want to overhype the return of the case. Play to Osby Mitchell, and he was a big force on that drive. He caught a couple of passes. There's a second one, and then another one as he takes it in. Tigers go on and get the touchdown play as Owens hops in, and here comes a big return by Southern. That is number four on the return, Hinton. Brandon Hinton with a lot of run, and that's the second big return we've seen the Jaguars contribute tonight. You just can't, you can't have that, right? I mean, you gotta have, you gotta have your special teams make them go the length of the field. And you know right now, I mean, we, we talked about it during that little break that Southern's gonna come out there and they're gonna say, you know, we're gonna pound you and we're gonna run you. And who's that number one runner for him? It's Skelton. He already has 81 yards on 11 attempts. Yeah, he is such a force running the football. I mean, he really is. And if you look at Nelson's just come off the bench, he has 32, and Sims has 27. So they've gotten a lot of uh, balance. This time, Skelton goes up with the pass under pressure. He gets away, pulls off the Houdini act, 
has a man wide open down the sideline, and then he's finally cracked down. He faked it to Nelson, excuse me, to number 28, Corey Williams, and then he came back to Williams after he had to scramble out of the pocket. Yeah, they had him, and boom, you're right, the Houdini, little magic act there. And then he's wide open, and, and I think that's Walker right there who just broke down and got the tackle, the sure tackle. Good job on that. Well, so much for working on the clock. This time, the handoff goes to Sims. The funny thing about that play is it never would have happened. It, it, great pressure from TSU forced him out of the pocket and allowed him to see his receiver, Corey Williams, open over there. Yeah, it created the open play right there. That time, Sims, nothing happening right there. He is stacked up by the interior of that TSU line. And I always love people to say, well, you shouldn't score so quick if you're trying to just run out the game. Really? <laughs> you just go and you get your score when you can. <laughs> Take it when you can get it. Second down for the Jaguars. Skelton on the keeper is inside the 10 and finally hit around the 8-yard line. We'll see how much they give him there as he kept powering his way forward. Well, that's why he's averaging, what is it, 6.6 six, six yards a carry. Your, your quarterback's averaging six yards a carry. Well, he's a force. He puts that extra pressure on the defense. And he's physical. Drew Robinson helping out on the tackle there, but he, he needed a lot of help from his friends. So now we have a third down coming up for the Southern University offense. Hands it to Sims inside, and did he get the first down? I think he did as he dives. They are moving the chain, so that will be a first and goal for the Jaguars. I think Pippen's big old arm is going to save that from being a touchdown. He's, he's had a whale of a game, and that guy is just here to play, and he, he is playing big in, inside. Jaguars knocking on the door again. Hands to Sims, and he powers his way into the end zone. You knew they were on a mission. I mean, Southern Southern pretty much just said, hey, we're, we're going to keep running. We're going to, you know, hit you right between the mouth, and that's exactly what they did. There's Gerard Sims. He's a sophomore from Opelousas, Louisiana, yeah. and it's just not much you can do about that once he gets... Uh, uh, head of steam going there. He just bulls his way into the end zone. Ah, just movement for Southern. Their, off their offensive line did a great job moving the, the defensive lineman and creating that gap. And, and Barajas boots another extra point. So the Jaguars put six more on the board. Southern started that drive with a big pass. That's what set the whole thing up. The long pass play, that drive took five plays, 45 yards, and it took them two minutes and 17 seconds to get into the end zone before Sims ran it in from five yards out. Wow. And that was the big play right there to Corey Williams that started it all, and you could see the pressure forcing him that way, mm -hmm. and then did give Williams a lot of credit for staying heads up. Yeah, and Skelton's really quite frankly too being calm enough to, to, to throw that ball just and a good drive Sims has scored one touchdown tonight this is the second one as he's done a good job of rushing the football now you know I think I think the Jaguars I think all but one time if I'm not uh, maybe all three times every time the Tigers have scored the very next drive they've come back and scored a touchdown if I'm not mistaken and that's that's just impressive when you answer like that it puts the pressure right back on the team that scores Dawson Odom's never had a losing season at Southern but this is one of the reasons why after a bye week after an open date he has an incredible 13 and 2 record so he has a lot of success when they have a, a week off to kind of get things together they usually come back and win because he's 13 and 2 after a bye week well you know, th those are things I look at when you look at, at good coaching and also halftime adjustments, right? I mean, those those are what makes the coaches uh, stand out from other coaches is what they do in that time, you know, at halftime, what, what they see in the game, how they change. And then, of course, when you have a week off, the, the art of refreshing your players, also keeping them intense and having them ready for that next week. 
And the other thing, Southern has done a better job of taking care of the ball. This week, two weeks ago, they had four turnovers. That makes a huge difference. This is Brown stepping up in the pocket, throwing behind his receiver, tried to come back and make a nice catch, but he just couldn't quite do it. That was number 81. Jaron Johnson, who's been one of his targets tonight. He's, Brown has done a good job of just moving the football around. Yeah, and especially knowing that his left leg is, you know, you can tell at certain times he's he's limping pretty good. I'm not sure if it's an ankle or a knee, but but he's still playing tough. Tigers on second down. Trying to get some room there for Owens, and he fights his way before he's pushed out of bounds. You take a look at the rushing yards tonight. Howard with uh, 13 carries for 52 yards. Owens, he'll have to tack on whatever that was. He had 11 and 42 uh, before that run right there. So Tigers have gotten something going on the ground. This time, good catch. Good job. Really a nice play. A good throw and a good catch. That ball was in the right position. Keelan Davis went it in. You can see the defender getting, tried to jump. It was Jacoby Jones. Didn't really do a good job. Yeah, and that was interference there, too, so even better job catching that ball. And You talk about accuracy. I know he's, he's had a couple of accuracy issues, but that was on point. So Brown, with some time, rolls out to his left. Fires way downfield, and he just threw that one away, and that was a smart play by the young quarterback. Do you notice how much torque he puts when he throws that ball? I mean, you see his whole body just, just, uh, just erupt. I don't know how to say it every time he throws the ball. Jalen Brown, 20 out of 32, 275 yards passing and one touchdown tonight for Texas Southern. Young man making his first start. Th those are impressive numbers. Been sacked two times tonight. Yeah, and I think, you know, he, he's had certainly plenty of adversity, but I, I, I also I also think the play calling has been been very good for him allowing him to make plays giving him enough opportunities to you know i think sometimes you see coaches trying to repeck, uh, 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 protect a freshman quarterback and they almost they're so conservative on the way they call the game that the he can't make a play and then you put make him so predictable he gets killed and his young receivers have been helping him out also tonight you can look at the stats there davis three for 85 mitchell three for 58 Johnson six for 52 Blanton three for 40 so the receivers the the older receivers trying to help the young quarterback out by making some plays for him now we have a second down coming up for TSU Brown with a nice pocket floats it deep and it's going to be intercepted tried to drop it in there but the safety came over and made the interception that is number 31 Jacoby Jones who got the interception and takes it all the way down for the Southern Jaguars. Well, and you got a little, little extracurricular activity here on the sidelines as well, but good good job picking off that ball, and then he did a nice job, man, running, running down, getting a lot of yards. I'm not sure he thought the safety could make it over there. Well, you know, it's one of the first times he's tried putting touch on the ball and kind of lobbing it. The interception by the Jaguars, a nice play by Jacoby Jones. We'll take us to the break. We'll come back with Southern on offense. Take Welcome back to BBVA Stadium where the Southern Jaguars have just intercepted the football, so they go back on offense. You know, as we take a look at some of there's the interception right there by Jacoby Jones. The safety yeah. just drifted over. Mm -hmm. He drifted over, and it was the first time uh, Brown actually tried to use touch on the ball and lost one instead of drill it in there. And he was just a little bit off. And you're right. I don't think he thought he could get to it. The Jaguars actually have a new offensive coordinator this year, Zach Grossi. And a big run straight up the middle. Nice, nice run on that one. Uh, Grossi came over last year. He was at Hampton University, where his offense, offense averaged like 30.8 yards a game. Excuse me, 30.8 points a game. And he got Lampley in there at quarterback now, too. Well, this is the time of the ball game with 8.49 to go where well, you probably will see a couple of uh, new faces. And, and Lampley did a good job last <laughs> One week. One play, right? Touchdown, yeah, right? <laughs> did a good job in the first half. You can't mess with perfection. <laughs> but we're talking about Grossi and a good sure. job he did with that with that offense. And uh, 
Here's in another straight ahead. I mean, the Jaguars have really run the ball well in the second half. Mm -hmm. um, but the interesting thing about his background, he was a scout, former scout for the Super Bowl champion Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Wow. So I was going to say, and he knows how to call a game because there's no, no doubt about it today. I mean, he's done a, a remarkable job of knowing when to pound it and then set up these real big plays. I love the two touchdowns for the tight end. Those are just not only good play calls, but when he called them uh, was just fantastic. And he's done a great job of, of using his running game to set up, set up good passes. Uh, it's been a very, very powerful game today by the Jaguars. Lampley gives it straight ahead, and the ball may have come out there. You, you saw that reaction after the play, like if uh, the guys were scrambling to get it, but no move from the officials to signal, signal one way or the other. So must have been down on the play. That's Mohammed on the carry, and he was down. Rashad Mohammed carrying the football for the Southern Jaguars. We talked a little bit about Lampley last week two weeks ago throwing two touchdown passes he had 238 yards passing and then today his lone pass in the first half as you mentioned went for a touchdown this time he fakes it rolling back to his right looking in the end zone still looking throws behind and it's a touchdown I mean th that's one of those things where the, wow and you watch this it was tipped wow it wasn't to his intended target it just wound up falling into uh, his that's a touchdown answer. to Brandon Hinton but that ball had to get through a lot of arms yeah look, look tip, at tip, that boom there and right to Brandon Hinton what you know when it's going good it's going good and there's not much you can do about that that's because right. the ball is tipped up a couple of maroon jerseys right there and it ends up in the back of the end zone for a touchdown so Brandon hitting the veteran <laughs> receiver on this team made a nice catch in them and give him credit for working back to the ball and staying alert. No, oh, sure. You don't apologize for a touchdown. I don't <laughs> care how you get it. <laughs> <laughs> so Barajas has been busy. Yeah, you see him keep doing that hip stretch there. He's kind of like <laughs> before he kicks. <laughs> Ooh. And he got another one. That wasn't, he won't get points for style there, but it got through the <laughs> uprights. Knuckle the ball. point is good, and the Jaguars have put a 50-burger on the board. They got 51 points tonight, so they've just done it a lot in the second half by just running the football. And then there's the interception that started it all on this drive. Jacoby Jones takes it down the sidelines. Four plays, 28 yards, and they did it in two minutes and 11 seconds. Some tough running inside there. Each drive they've had has been somewhere between touchdown score drives have been around two minutes 11 to two about 31 that seems to be no matter how many yards they go that seems to be about how long they tend to get there well it's been a streaky game you know we've gotten points in bunches in mm -hmm. this game tonight and we've had a lot of big plays and we've also had some big defensive plays and if you look at how many points both teams have scored you would think oh this is not you know what's the defense have had some good plays in this one yeah, no, no, no. I mean, and, and they battled. I would, I would say the the Tigers' defense has been was playing really good to this fourth quarter. I think just the, the 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 pounding through three quarters. Once you get to that fourth quarter, I feel like it's just 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 too much for them. And they've been put in some tough situations. I mean, through kickoff returns, et cetera. So uh, you know, it's been rugged. Terrence Franklin deep, but that ball will never get to him, and it is fumble. It is still loose, and a good job by number 81, Jaron Johnson, getting on that loose ball, but that was a very dangerous play for the Tigers. Hey, you know what, Jorge? You can cheer on the TSU women's volleyball team at the H&PE Arena as the Lady Tigers take on Grambling State tomorrow, March 21st. That's tomorrow afternoon, 5 p.m. Admission is free, so you have nothing to lose. Log on to TSUsports.com for more information. Basketball team in the NCAA tournament doing really well. You know, lost today to Michigan, but what a showing they made beating Mount St. Mary's. And then the Tigers back on the offensive attack again. Look at number 20 there. Jalen Nelson showing a bit of power on that play. Good vision. Really good vision on his cuts. Watch that. Boom. Cut there. Boom. Sets up sets up a defender right there. Nice there finish on the play. And then again, another strong run from Jalen Nelson, the 5'8", 200-pound senior from Dallas, transferred in from Texas State. 
getting a chance to show what he can do tonight. And they give it to him one more time. And he's dropped just shy of the 30-yard line. So not a very big back at 5'8", but he's also shown he's got he's got a little speed and got a little power to go with that. Yeah. And I think, you know, it's not just speed, too. It's that quickness. You can see he kind of makes those decisions quickly. So this time, Brown gives to Nelson again. He scoots off tackle for a couple of yard gains. And, and I know some TSU fans tonight are going to look at the school board and, 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 and be somewhat disappointed because you always want to see your team win. Sure. But I, I tell you what, when you watch that young man right there, number 14, you can see what's ahead for the TSU Tigers. I mean, I see what all the coaches were raving about. He, he can play ball. Yeah, and right there on the option did a good job. I just think score, sometimes the score doesn't really show how competitive part of, you know, I think this last fourth quarter, you know, the Jaguars just kind of uh, just dominated this fourth quarter and just made the score, you know, uh, out of reach. But I thought it's been a competitive football game this last last part of this fourth quarter. What it is, and, and it's a learning opportunity and a learning experience for Jalen Brown as he goes out there in the heat of the battle. This time he hands off to number 30, Dominic Franklin. A young man who, and, and you got to like him, who's staying in there and he's cheering on his teammates. He was the starting running back for part of last year, and this year he has to come in off the bench and play his role, and, and he's doing that uh, well and getting some action tonight. Well, that's when you see good camaraderie, when you see teammates just take the role that they're given. They're not arguing about who they are or what they are. Brown's throwing for the end zone, and he came very close. Just missed this man down there. In the end zone, Derek Morton was the intended receiver. That was close. <laughs> he almost stretched out enough to maybe to, to, to grab onto that. Well, he's you know, you can see the timing is just a little off. He's throwing to those spots, and he's barely missing those guys. We saw him miss Giles in the other end zone mm -hmm. earlier tonight. Same type play right there. Third down, eight coming up for the TSU offense. Brown under pressure has to throw it away. That one's going to be an incompleted pass, and Brown has taken some hits tonight. Yeah, I don't know if they're going to give him a flag on that one or not because he it was didn't throwing. didn't get back to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, I don't think so, yeah. and he was throwing to no one. Yeah. And I'm surprised how well he moves considering his legs been hurting him. So the Tigers now have a third down. There's no flag. Let's see. It's a tough young man right there, Jalen Brown. So they're going to replay third down because there was an offside penalty against the Jaguars. So that's going to be new life for Texas Southern. I think they called out Jordan Lewis, didn't they? I think they said number 32. But I don't see him out there right now. So. <laughs> Third down and short for TSU. Big pressure on the play, and the young quarterback just had to unload in a hurry because he had a lot of pressure on him. The pressure coming from number 54, that is Davin Cotton, who was back there pressuring coverage, Cordell Caldwell. But Southern has done a good job with those blitzes tonight on third down. They put them, yes, it's very timely blitzes is a good way to put it. Because mm -hmm. they haven't blitzed a lot, but when they have, they've made it count. So a 34-yard field goal coming up by Richard Garcia. Good snap, good hole, kick is on its way, and Garcia drills it. So Garcia puts three more on the board for the Tigers. Nice job right there. So as we pause for a break, we have 418 to go in the ball game. Tigers just put three on the board. We'll be back with more in a minute. And Look at the scoring summary. It was a nine-play drive, 42 yards, and it culminated with that field goal from Richard Garcia. But it was another good drive by the young man, Jalen Brown, leading the Tigers down the field before Richard Garcia split the uprights right there. 
for TSU. 42 yards on the drive, and the field goal attempt from 34 yards was good. So the Jaguars will down that one, so they'll bring it back out. And uh, probably a good decision right there. Yeah, that what the Jaguars are trying to do right now. They're, I mean, you know, we thought they were going to give a running dose before. Uh, you can certainly believe that's exactly what you're going to see right now. Yeah, what he just explained, the, the ref, is because uh, even though he had a fair catch for the ball, because he dropped it, that's where the ball will be placed, where he dropped and picked it back up. Lampley back in at quarterback for Southern. Turns and hands it straight ahead to Muhammad, who goes right up the middle, picks up about eight or nine, uh, coming right back with it. So they're going to just chew on that clock now. We're down right at the four-minute mark to go in this ball game. Yeah, and you've got some different faces in there right now uh, for the Tigers and for Southern as well. So you're going to see Southern for sure. Uh, for one, you see them huddling. Uh, it's rare you see a college yeah. team anytime ever huddle. I'm yeah. surprised they know how to do it. <laughs> That's a very good point because usually you go right to the line of scrimmage. So Lampley comes up now on second down. Turns and he hands to Muhammad again. He had some room on the outside, cut it back inside, and he picked up the first down for Southern. Dradrian McGraw on the stop. Rashad Muhammad. 5'10", 188 from Memphis, getting a little workout for the Jaguars now. That was good pursuit. That could have been a bigger play. Inside of three minutes to go in this one. Good to see Lampley out there getting some action in this game. Coach Odom said earlier this week in the press conference, as you heard, he said that he had a game plan for both quarterbacks. He said we have a game plan for Lampley. We have one for Skelton. And uh, both guys understand their specific things that they need to do to help us win. Yeah, you know what I thought was interesting when he talked about Skelton? He said, look, he knows what he did. He knows he didn't perform. He came out. And now, now it's up to him how he handles it. And, and what he's going to do this week, right? And obviously, what that tells me from Skelton starting this week was that he handled it well, right? And he got himself prepared, got himself ready, and what rerun his starting quarterback again. Uh, I thought that was uh, that shows you what kind of what kind of demeanor Skelton has. And another handoff, and yeah, you, you mentioned that in, in Ladarius Skelton a couple of weeks ago. That was in the Arkansas Pine Bluff game. He actually had a personal foul penalty called against him. When is the last time you have saw a quarterback get a personal <laughs> foul penalty called? Uh, you know, it doesn't happen often, that's for sure. But as physical a player as he is, I could actually see it, though, right? I mean, if he feels like a, a defender took a shot unnecessarily at him, I could see him probably coming at him. You know, I mean, but, but, but you know, Southern came in here ready to go, and like you said earlier in this broadcast, I mean, they were they were a little miffed that, that uh, they felt like they let one get away against Pine Bluff. Uh, they were retooling, making sure they didn't let that happen uh, this week, and they came out and they performed well. They, they, uh, they took control of the game early. I thought the Tigers did a great job of answering the bell uh, several times and kept that game close. Uh, you know, there was... I, and, and recovered from some, from some really things that could have gone bad. I mean, when, when Brown early in the game, you know, had that fumble, they could have let that just start snowballing right there at the beginning of the game. They didn't. They recovered uh, and, and, and kept this game close. Well, one place you, you know the Tigers are going to go after this is all said and done and everything is, is over is we're going to go back to the special teams and take another look because too many times the offense drove down and then they gave up a big play on special teams to let Southern have the ball in offensive position again. And, you know, that's not something Coach McKinney wants to see, and I can well, promise you they'll work that out. Well, surely right after, I mean, you had a huge answer that one time, and then right before the half, and then they returned it for a touchdown. And then uh, beginning of the third quarter, or right in the third quarter, I believe, there was another huge return that put it to the 45-yard line. Uh, a couple of those. So, you know, when you, when you set the Jaguars up in great offensive position, you put your defense really 
in a tough, tough spot. And those are things, those are things that'll be corrected and they'll work on. 124 and ticking as the clock uh, ticks down. Muhammad getting quite a workout here late in the ball game. He's got several touches. Rashad Muhammad. Yeah, and I'm not sure, you know, Thurman Morbley, you know, we talked about that beginning of the game. You know, he had that shot where he, you know, he threw, threw a shot at, at another player. I don't know if officially he was kicked out of the game or not. I know we haven't seen him. If that was a coaching decision or he officially was kicked out at that point. But, you know, either way, I mean, that's a big loss loss for, for uh, the Texas Southern as well. Yeah, and, and we, we got no official word from the official, so I'm not sure what happened either. Mm -hmm. But I hadn't seen him on the sidelines either. So mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure what happens. As you see, the Jaguars taking a knee. Skelton, excuse me, that was Lampley taking a knee, touching down. We have 30 seconds to go in this one. Yeah, they will not have to run another play. So overall, you know, the, the, you did not accomplish the main goal, which was to win the game for the TSU Tigers, but Coach saw a lot of good things that he can work with and move forward from this point on. And one of those good things, whether maybe the best thing he saw all night was Jalen Brown and the job he did. Yeah, and I think some uh, he had a lot of players step up around that young quarterback and make some plays. I thought Jonathan Giles uh, was really big uh, in the game and, and, and made some big plays. And I thought Mitchell uh, uh, was another player that, that, that made some big plays and, and, uh, and stepped up for him. I think both running backs did a really good job as well, Howard and Owens. Jalen Brown finished the night 20 of 35, 275 yards and one touchdown. Not a bad night for the rookie at all. Final score from BBVA, the Southern Jaguars 51 and the TSU Tigers 23. We'll be right back to wrap things up from BBVA Stadium. Wrap things up tonight's SWAC shootout between the TSU Tigers and the Southern Jaguars. Final score from BBVA 51 to 23. Southern coming out on top, but as a rivalry, you know, this one had everything you could ask for, and then it just slipped away late in the ball game. Yeah. Well, not exactly late in the ball game, but in the second half. No, no. I mean, it was an entertaining football game uh, early, and it was, it, it, you know, the fourth quarter, it got away from it. You know, it just got away from uh, uh, the Tigers, no doubt about it. But Southern, uh, I mean, that's a good football team. They they had some great coaching, and you had some great execution on that side. Let's level. talk a little bit about the young freshman quarterback for TSU because he came in, made his first start tonight. You look at his numbers, 20 of 35, 275, one touchdown. That one TD was from 54 yards out. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, what really showed me a lot of character was after that, the first two drives, right? I mean, you had some really rough, rough goes of it. But then he just settled down, and I thought I thought the coaching staff did a great job of play calling, allowing him to have some quick, easy throws, allow him to get in rhythm, and then he made big throws, and he was pretty accurate for the most part. Okay, let's take a look at some of the action from the first half. We'll catch you up from the, actually, from the whole ball game. Second half, we will start with a big fumble in the first half, but the young man recovered from that play. It was a bad fumble, and uh, mm -hmm. he came back to show what he was made of tonight. Yeah, and I'm right there running with the ball. I mean, look how... You know, he was, his de decision was, was really good and then, you know, did a good job. And there, there was a good, good runoff tackle. Ja'Cory Howard banging in for the touchdown to put the Tigers on the board. Nice, powerful run. And then Lampley, his only pass of the first <laughs> half, goes for a touchdown to Sims. And then this was the guy who really made things happen tonight. Ladarius Skelton, he got away with one right there because it was almost picked off. And then here's the touchdown pass to Jalen Davis. Right down the sidelines, in for the touchdown. Yeah, and that was huge coming off of a, of a first down they didn't think they were going to get. And then just great play calling and even better execution. And then Sims and the Jaguars, they just did a great job of running the ball in the second half. Jacoby Jones with an interception right there. Maybe the biggest mistake that the young man made at quarterback. Did not read the safety, lofted that ball out there and paid for it. And then this is Lampley with his second touchdown pass tonight. <laughs> finds Brandon Hinton in the back of the end zone. A diving. That's after that ball was touched at least twice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and it found its way to Hinton. So let's take a look at some of the final numbers from tonight's ball game. Yeah, and I think the big number that sticks out there is what? Rushing 230 yards for the Jaguars. I mean, that is humongous with the quarterback leading the way, Skelton, uh, for the Jaguars. 
I mean, only 102 for the Tigers. And I mean, that, that says it all. When you're able to dominate rushing like that, that opens up key big passes. You don't have as much passing yards for the Jaguars at 186, but the ones you did get were huge. It really was. And you look at those statistics and you, and you look at that and you see how close it is. You wonder, well, okay, what happened on the scoreboard? But that can happen to you in the second half. We mentioned a couple of special teams breakdowns and it just kind of got out of hand. Yeah, it's hidden numbers right there. And again, especially when one of those special teams is a touchdown return. And that one hurt right before the half. But all in all, if you just wanted to wrap it up for and, 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 and find a, a bow to wrap this thing up for the TSU Tigers, they do have a lot of positive things to take out of this ballgame, even in a loss. Yeah, you have a lot of promise. Uh, I think you saw a lot, of, a lot of guys really start to believe in that quarterback. So if he's a guy that you're going to need to move forward with, I mean, I'm not sure what the, the health of your other quarterbacks are. That's usually very toxic, hidden information until right before game yeah. time. So whatever you're going to do, now you've got three quarterbacks you can, you, can, you, can, you can utilize. And I think you saw the team rally around them. And one thing that I, 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 I see the Tigers all the time, their players believe in their coaching staff and they execute what's called. And you brought it up during the ball game, how some of the older receivers really stepped up to help out the young quarterback, you know, on mm -hmm. their routes and doing different things and, and pumping him up on the sideline. Yeah, no, you saw a lot of interaction going on out there. And so that's good to see. And again, as a receiver, what can you do the best? Get open for your quarterback and show him your numbers and try to make sure you make yourself available. And I thought, I thought they did that. Again, not quite enough. The Jaguars are a really good team. They had some good defense. Uh, they took care of it, but uh, but I think you've got good building blocks here to move forward with. Next home game for the TSU Tigers, they will take on Grambling, and that one, we will be back for that one. Should be a lot of fun. Yeah, and if you're sitting there at home, why don't you try getting out here and enjoy it? We love you watching us, but be good to get out here as well. Oh, it'd be a lot of fun. So for Jorge Vargas and our entire crew, I'm Butch Alcindor saying we hope you enjoyed tonight's broadcast. The final score, 51-23 Southern over Texas Southern. This has been a presentation of AT&T Sportsnet.